<coughs> I think we are live, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. And uh, thanks for joining, especially on Saturday morning. I hope that you guys can hear me and uh, see me properly. Just want to have some confirmation in the in the chat, in the live chat. Hey, hi, Samin. Hey, Sachin. Uh, good to see you. Hey, Khaja. Good. Nagendra also joined. So just confirm me, guys, that are you able to hear me properly? And then you can see me properly. There is no lag. There is no issue with my background noise or anything. Everything is perfect here. I hope that's good. Hey, Samya. Hey, Ravish. Hey, Dinesh. Great. So uh, good that okay, people are joining. And uh, <clears throat> we thought of uh, having this discussion Saturday morning because I think uh, this time will cover especially in India and then US also, I think, and then the Europe and UK also. Generally, we have a discussion in the night, so especially for the US and India folks, but I think it's an ideal time for most of the people. Good that it was much needed, this discussion. So uh, without wasting our time, I think we have uh, 130 plus people so far joined and then uh, this recording will be there forever on the channel also but i want that if you have any questions or something feel free to ask your questions in the comment section in the chat please make sure that uh, don't spam the chat and uh, please write your name and your country or city name from where exactly you are joining so that will be great that will be great motivation for us as well so we have one very special guest today there is no need for uh, having an introduction for uh, brijesh so let me add Brijesh also in the stream. Hey, Brijesh. Hey, How are you? Naveen. Uh, I am uh, OK, <laughs> uh, feeling a lot better. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I, I, I feel <laughs> I'm back home, you know, <laughs> coming to your channel. <laughs> Last yes. time I came, I, I, I remember having come with a lot of other panelists. So this is mm. my first time alone. Uh, with you. <laughs> so. No, it's always an honor to have with you and then discussing with you about testing and different things, what is there in the market. So uh, I really wanted to have this discussion. But you tell that how exactly we started. Like, I really want to know from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I wrote very briefly on LinkedIn about how this happened. So uh, yeah, I think it was a week or 10 days ago when you called me yes. to inquire about my health and we got talking and obviously when you know two testers talk the conversation is generally around testing so mm -hmm. we started talking and then um, you know uh, i was of course talking to you about one of the discussions that happened recently and that mm -hmm. a lot of questions were around a particular topic so we mm -hmm. said yeah this is a topic which has a lot of misconceptions and myths and not mm -hmm. just this topic but in general there are mm -hmm. a lot of uh, there is a lot of confusion that's prevailing in the industry right now. And uh, in the current uh, scheme of things with a lot of layoffs happening and a lot of things mm. going on around us. Yeah. So uh, a discussion is necessary. And as we got talking, mm. uh, I think we decided that we should have a, you know, a conversation in a bigger forum. And mm. there is no better forum than this YouTube where we have so many people joining. It is so nice to see almost uh, 190 people already joining. So, mm. so heartwarming to see all of you guys. Uh, so yeah, that's how the the conversation has happened. So we both are here, and uh, we are going to talk about uh, a lot of things. Correct. So guys, uh, because me and me and Rajesh be, be like very particular about what is happening in the testing, and like it's all about our passion about the testing and the kind of work that we do. So. It's all about our opinion also that we really want to share. Maybe we are wrong, maybe at some places, maybe we are right, maybe you don't agree with our opinion. But we really want to share our opinion with you that what exactly we have to learn in terms of testing, what are the new aspects of testing in the market, and then especially in the AI world, especially in the chat GPT world, what are the new things that we have to learn? Do we really need to focus upon and do we really need to really have a fear of AI or not, what is the future of AI testing and then other automation, testing future, testing jobs will be there in the future or not. Those things I really want to have it uh, with the with Brijesh because when I see a lot of things on social media, it actually sometimes feels like, no, why is it happening like this? Why people are sharing a wrong thing? 
So that's what like it's a uh, always a good forum that we just come live and then share our opinion about it. And if you agree on that, definitely uh, most welcome. Or if you really want to correct us, maybe we are wrong. So definitely we are looking for uh, forward for learning from you guys as well. So the format is very simple. Uh, we are not having, we are not going to bore you guys. Don't worry about it. We have uh, some very specified question that we got it from the audience. Plus Brijesh and me also prepared some questions. We will take it, those questions. Plus definitely we'll take your questions also from the chat. And uh, nothing to worry. It's not about only 45 minutes of one hour session. We will try to take as much as possible all the questions from the audience. And, uh, and accordingly, we will uh, discuss. So yeah, Brijesh, yeah, and uh, Naveen, uh, if you don't mind, can I go ahead with some housekeeping rules for the audience? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, folks, uh, for a few things that I need to mention, like Naveen said, this show is for you guys. So please do not hesitate to ask your questions. Okay, we will take your questions as we go along. This is meant for you, and what we want is at the end of the discussion you should have as many answers as, as you want with you. If you have any points to share, your thoughts, your opinion, please please feel free to share. Okay, don't don't hesitate. We, we also are looking to learn. So like Naveen said, we will be happy if you can you know, share your thoughts and, and we also learn something out of it. Uh, most important things, uh, if you are here for the first time or if you have not subscribed to Naveen Automation Labs yet, please do so. Please do so, guys. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, uh, I know the pain of not subscribing. I will, and I've shared the story with Naveen already once, so I'll share it once again. So back in 2017, when Naveen started his channel, a few months later, I found his channel and I started watching videos. And I used to every time search and watch the videos. And, uh, you know, almost two years I was doing this thing when I when I had the wisdom of of actually subscribing and then i realized that you know as soon as naveen puts up a new video i get the notification that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it so i instead of searching all the time you know that was a very easy thing for me to do and 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 that's when i learned the value that okay as as audience this is what i'm gaining so you know if you've not done it please do so now another point that i want to mention is naveen has been very gracious and he's collaborating with the test chat you can see the test chat logo here uh, already on your screens. Uh, so the test chat uh, YouTube channel is also there. Um, so there are a number of podcasts and other discussions related to testing on the test chat uh, YouTube channel. Please uh, subscribe to that as well. Uh, you can uh, connect with us on LinkedIn and our LinkedIn profiles are also mentioned in the description. So everything is uh, there in the description. Go through the description once and, and you will get a lot of information. Our Telegram groups links are also mentioned. You can join both uh, Naveen Automation Labs and the Test Chat Telegram groups as well for a lot of information. So with that, uh, Naveen, I, I want to begin the discussion. And Great. the first uh, point that I have for you is, uh, what is your thought on the current state of testing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So see, according to me, the current state of testing, and um, it's going good. Okay, but there are uh, some misconceptions also, and then especially with the new generation where people are coming and they are like too much focused on the AI part and the AI testing, and then having I think not having much idea or a clear idea about what to learn, what not to learn. See, the basics are always be there. I mean, basics will always be there. Twenty years back and ten years back when we started, that time also those basics are still helping us to create the content and learning and implementing the new things. So the testing current see current thing if I if I see that having some uh, inferiority complex, it actually was better few years back. But again, we are I think according to me getting into the same zone that okay, no, what will happen with the testing? What is the future of testing? Testing jobs will be vanished because of AI and all those things. And then uh, just like we started with the automation, that automation will kill the actual testing. And then now AI is coming. AI will kill something, or robots will do the testing. There is no score for testers and something like that. I think these are the things that I generally see on social media and when I talk to people also. And then they are also maybe maybe uh, having no idea about it. That's why they are writing it or maybe they are also confused. That's why they are asking also. But according to me, that there are some great people who are working in the industry, like people like you, James, and a lot of good people, Sanjay, Mukesh, and a lot of people are there. 
they are doing great amount of work in the testing and i think uh, we should learn from them you can see their career path and everything and that's a great thing that the, you guys are doing it so if you follow the right thing follow the right path with the right direction and the guidance the future the career and everything it will be great but if you are diverting our focus with a lot of fancy things which are coming in our path with respect to ai and automation some fancy automation these days ai automation or something like that i think uh, ai should be our friend not our enemy so we should leverage ai to enhance the testing and automation or whatever the field that you're working in then i think that should enhance that thing instead of uh, uh, you know having a fear of those things in fact i have got a lot of question that okay ai i mean testing has no future after 10 years better you know i was like somebody was commenting on my channel that okay to other freshers that please don't join testing field it's uh, bullshit and then uh, no jobs are available better you start with a development profile or something like that so it it actually i feel you know really i feel really bad about it that okay why this misconception and this theory is actually there in the market so this is my current uh, perception in the idea about the testing in the current scenario <clears throat> Uh, i think i think you brought up some very good points navin uh, um you know uh, i have a similar outlook uh, as per as i am concerned i i get similar questions i get uh, you know uh, i have seen people going through similar uh, thoughts in their mind and every time there is a hype of a new technology coming in you mm -hmm. know uh, people think about oh will this kill testing okay uh, it happened when automation first arrived and that thought is still there automation will kill all testing you know and testing jobs will be taken uh, taken over still people are talking about it after so many years of automation existing when agile came people had the same uh, conception oh agile is going to take over uh, you know there is people are only talk, talking about development roles nobody is mm. talking about testing so mm. and we've already seen that you know in in pure agile teams you don't have roles like test lead or test manager so people are worried where is the mm. growth path so suddenly people start thinking about switching and now with ai coming in the fear <laughs> is back so you're absolutely right people somehow get into that inferiority complex mode every mm. time there is a new technology coming mm. and we've seen that testing has survived all the storms it is going to survive the Correct. way i look at it is very simple as long as you are building products you will need to test them mm. so the day you stop building something your testing will stop okay and if you look at the journey of testing and testers through the years you will probably find that testing is the only profession which has survived recession very well correct right uh, even in recession testing jobs were there so there is mm. nothing to worry as such yeah you may see a see a little bit of slump because when companies look at cost cutting they look at testers as the first scapegoat to to eliminate the positions but then they realize that that is a mistake that they have done and then they hire back testers once again so this goes on every time so i don't think there is a, a, i mean there is a reason for you to press the panic button instead right. of doing that and i want to highlight something on this Uh, at the start of the year navin uh, did a wonderful video on his channel about how to survive in 2024 as a tester i think if if you have not watched that video you should go ahead and watch it because navin made some very good points about uh, you know upgrading yourself about how to stay relevant in the industry in 2024 with the ai storm with what not gibberish technology and and all high fund do testing terms and i don't know what all but uh, but that video was really inspiring and i think if you have not watched it you should watch it okay and and there is a lot of uh, misconceptions that are going to be created now uh, navin uh, talking about it let me touch upon this also very briefly uh, we are seeing a storm of layoffs around us hmm. you know and things are quite sad almost uh, you know um, almost 100000 people have been laid off in this mm -hmm. year already and we are still mm -hmm. not you know february is not even finished so uh, it is a sad state we have seen a lot of testers also losing their job as a result of the layoffs 
So two questions on that. Number one, um, what can these testers who have been laid off do to come back to their jobs or find better jobs? And secondly, what can I do as a tester to make myself safe from such a situation happening to me? Hmm. Okay. See, your second question is very important. That how exactly I can avoid the situation that I am not into that trap of firing the job or you know losing my job. But if you never know that uh, this is how IT works and the corporate works, I think it's most because of the market correction. Because of uh, from last couple of years, if you see, because of after COVID also, there was a crunch of resources and people were companies were hiring like anything with some some very smart package or. Uh, there is no limit for the package and the offers. I think now again, that again back to the normal and the market is correcting itself. So, and that's where the firing is happening and the layoffs are happening. But um, it's really sad to know. But uh, there is, I generally want to highlight one thing here that uh, generally I talk to other people also that no need to panic. No need to be unnecessarily depressed. Market is still good. In fact, you won't believe, I'm not saying that there are no jobs available in the market. There are jobs, but the jobs are available with the competition, with the right set of tools and the skill set. So if you have not upgraded yourself from last couple of years, from last four years or five years, you haven't given any interview from last four years and five years, or I, whenever there is an interview, then only I will, I want to study and then only I want to read about it. That's a misconcept. That is not going to help us in the current market situation for next five years and 10 years also. If you really want to survive, you have to learn and you have to upgrade. So this is very, very important. So second thing is that what if I don't want to get into this trap or uh, into this particular situation, then again, just keep learning about it. If you're not getting enough work in your current project, there are so many things these days you can do. You can just be, uh, you can write some good blogs. You can maintain your repositories. You can do a lot of POCs on different tools and everything. You can just uh, push some good amount of automation work in your current company and then showcase those things. Keep practicing it. I have seen people, they have not touched some basic tool from last couple of years because they did not get opportunity in the in their current projects. And now suddenly they, they got into the situation. Then again, they have to start from the from zero, from the basics once again, because they have forgot everything. So you, if you're not practicing it on a daily basis, if you're not learning, if you're not up to the market, what is happening with, let's say for example, in case of Selenium, a very basic example that four years, five years back, we used to talk about Selenium 3 and other things, but now Selenium 4 is there in the market. So you have to learn the latest thing. What are new changes happened with respect to Selenium and everything? So that's very, very important. Same thing, what other different competitor tools are available like Playwright, Cypress, or different languages? I have not upgraded myself with the language also. I'm talking about the programming language. So that is also very important. Plus, you have to be really different from others. You have to showcase your uh, your uh, the quality. You have to showcase your power that, okay, yeah, this is how I can do for this particular company. If you are very, uh, very dull and not focusing on the things and then not trying new things in the current company and then not taking any new responsibilities and everything, because with the experience, the maturity and the responsibility also will be there on your shoulder. We're still yeah. having the same mindset of two years experience guy after five years and seven years also. No, I'm just a QA guy and nine to five job writing manual test cases or writing the test cases in the Excel sheet and then done, done, done. No, that is not going to help us. Every day there is a there is a scope of learning. You have to take a lot of initiatives and everything. And then the communication, domain knowledge, talk to people, you know, public relationship, soft skills, testing your skills. Those things matter a lot to survive in the market. If you're having a dull no, I just want to do the basic stuff. Then the, those basic stuff can be done by other guys also. And it's not much needed as of now. So that's why you are in that list. I'm not saying 100% uh, if you're not doing anything, then 100% you will be in that list. But there are chances are there that you will be in that list. And then you might get a bad news from your current company or something like this. Plus, one more point I want to highlight that uh, what we do that we don't pick a right company at the right time. So if you are really getting a good package and really giving a smart package of good park perks and stocks and everything, but maybe the company is very, very small. Maybe they could not uh, get the next round of funding or something and they have some lot of budget issues and everything. There is no uh, issue with your talent. There is no problem with your talent, your knowledge and everything, but still you might get into that situation. But if your preparation is good, then I don't think so that you need to worry about it. You are always uh, ready for the 
offers, I mean, to get a new offer and you can just crack the interviews anytime. So that is my take on this. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think you made this very clear. I just want to add one thing. Okay? Now, uh, with any employer in any job, hmm. uh, what the employer is generally looking f- from us is not just our work. They are also looking for value in the work that we do. Correct. What value are you bringing to them? Okay. Hmm. If somebody has hired you, what is it that you are doing for them, which is of importance to them, which is of value to them? This is something that you have to figure out. Okay. And you will learn to figure this out as you go along, as you progress along in your journey as a tester. Okay. Initially, you will think, oh, I'm I'm here just to write test cases or something like that. But as you gain experience, like Naveen said, when you move from two years to five years, you should have enough maturity to, to say that, okay, your role or your being there in that company demands extra from you. So how right. proactive you are in terms of gaining that knowledge, helping business, coming up with thoughts and ideas. Uh, you know, people often talk about edge cases. You know, when, when there is a production issue, uh, mm. the, uh, people will see that, oh, this was an edge case and how we somehow missed it. So mm. if at, at five years experience, if you are not able to think of that edge case, then, you know, something needs to be looked at, right? So you have to become that smart and come up with newer ideas. Okay, gain that domain knowledge Naveen was just mentioning. Okay, how is it benefiting the business will always be the question. And as long as you are showing your value, I think your job will be safe. Exactly. Okay, that's, 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 that's something that, that I strongly feel. And, and Naveen, I completely resonate with your uh, your response on that one. I, I, I'm seeing some good questions already on the chat. So let's go ahead and take some. The first one is from Sharon and he says, Hi Naveen and Vijesh, our company is implementing GitHub Copilot to write code and leveraging on AI solutions. What's your opinion on this? Naveen, GitHub yeah. Copilot. Yeah, I have used personally GitHub Copilot. I'm already having it. In fact, I prepared a video on this. It's a great thing. But I would advise you that uh, it's not mandatory that to use. But let's see, for example, you are a very fresher or very new in the coding. And mm-hmm. then uh, the moment you write any method name or class name and then all the logic, the entire logic is coming. The moment you write a comment, Copilot will give you the entire logic without uh, without uh, you know thinking anything. And then just give you the simple basic code and then you can just copy paste or just tab it and then return. Fine. You can just improve the productivity like anything. You can just finish your work within a few hours. <laughs> Instead of few days, that is really good. But you think about for your personal growth point of view, also your knowledge point of view, also the way you are implementing the logic. You must have you must have seen that, right? We used to do let's see few years back for a single method also. Let's see to solve a specific complex problem that we used to write, we used to debug, that we used to run with the different test data. How exactly it is really working or not? And then again next day it's not working. Then again we are trying to debug it and fix it and refactor it. So this is like giving a lot of confidence. So that I know that, okay, whenever I'm going to implement the same logic next time, it's going to help me a lot. But with this co-pilot, this leverage, this thing that you are actually missing it. This is like yeah. actually using a normal calculator for doing two plus two also. So don't make yes. it so habitual with these AI suggestions with the co-pilot or chat GPT and everything. That is not going to help. It is actually blocking your mind. And then your mind will be very limited to the specific thing only. So we are, uh, otherwise don't call yourself as a, Automation tester, if you are doing only for the codeless or uh, only directly getting the code from somewhere and copy pasting the things. So tester or sorry, developer or automation engineer means you have to write the code, debug the code, test your code, run it, refactor it, maintenance, tech depth. You have to be involved into those activities. So that is my perception on that. Uh, I, I think I think that is so true, uh, Naveen. Um, another thing that I, I see as a challenge is is Okay, Copilot may help you with a piece of code, with a piece of, uh, you know, uh, with, with information on a particular library or whatever. But how do you think it's going to understand your context? Hmm. Right? And, and testing as such is so context specific that, you know, you cannot use the same strategy for two different projects because they will have different contexts. Right, what works for Naveen may not work for me. Right, 
Naveen may approach his project in a totally different manner. Okay, for him, he can choose a totally different stack to solve his problems because the problems are specific to the business that Naveen is looking at. Whereas I am looking at something totally different. So the same solutions may not apply for me. So Correct. how are you going to bring that balance using tools like Copilot? Correct. I think it's a very good question for, from Utkarsh Vijesh that do you think after having the Copilot or Tab 9 people will still mm. uh, prefer to learn programming languages in deep the way we used to? Will it not affect the learning habit? Absolutely. Like, Vijesh, what do you think about yes. it? Yes. Uh, so it will uh, affect the learning habit. You know, um, so I have always believed this and you may um, probably, I don't know, you may probably disagree with me, but I think all these apps, you know, ever mm. since we have gotten started getting used to these apps and so much technology, we have started getting lazier and lazier by the day. Absolutely. Mm. And, uh, you know, these things like Copilot or Tab9 uh, are making us lazy. You know, our learning slows down because we know that, oh, Copilot is there to correct me. So I will not do the research by myself. Mm. Okay, I will not try and make an attempt to look at my code, debug it, refactor it if required, or mm. you know, even go ahead and talk to some people who understand mm. what could be my problem. I will stop doing that because every time I have a problem, I will you know very easily go to Copilot and say, okay, solve my problem. Mm. And nine out of ten times, it will give you an answer as as well. Okay, that is one thing. The other, the, the other thing that I see is that, you know, uh, when it comes to programming languages, uh, it is quite helpful in learning these different programming languages because that gives you the ability to solve a lot of different problems. Correct. Now with this, uh, with these, you are not making an attempt to solve the problems. You know, you are letting the tool to solve those problems. So the problems will remain. You may remember the solution or not, but if you get your hands dirty, you will know how to solve similar problems in future by yourself, right? You will become more creative, more innovative. So that's what I think personally. Yes, it will affect learning. It will uh, slow us down to a great extent. While mm. it is good to have it as a friend, over-reliance on such tools will definitely do much harm is what I think. What do you yes. say, Naveen? Yes, yes. Over, over use of these tools and totally dependent on this. See, there is a, there always a, a process. So you remember that till 12th class or in fact, in fact, 10th class is space in India. We were not allowed to use any calculator. Correct. Okay. It's because my teachers were saying that, okay, no, you have to calculate and then all the calculators were available, but you have to calculate it manually. It will improve your logical and mathematical and analytical skills. You will think about how exactly you are actually calculating and doing some different mathematical or arithmetic things over there. And then suddenly 11, 12 May, we used to have those scientific calculation to improve the things because those things are very minute things for us because I really want to quick, okay, sign of this and cos of this and sign theta of this and quickly get the thing from there instead of wasting my time on this. So there should be always be a balance between these two things. That's why, like, if you remember that in our college time, we used to write the code in notepad. Yes. And then I used to compile the code manually and then used to see yes. that, okay, how many errors are there. But when we were into the corporate, then we were using the Eclipse or IntelliJ, the automatic suggestions and all those things are coming. And now the co-pilot, something like this. So my suggestion is that don't be too much, like, rely on these uh, AI-based suggestions and the tools. If you are really getting expertise and you know that, okay, these are the number of methods are available for those suggestions, maybe we can just quickly do it, but it should always be a balance between the AI suggestions plus the way you are writing the logic. Maybe you can write the logic and then you can ask the co-pilot or chat GPT that can, can I, there is a scope of improvement. Let's see, maybe you forgot to add some null check or maybe blank check over there, or maybe some test case that you are missing some out of the box scenario that you missed in your, uh, in your method or in your code. Maybe for that purpose, definitely you can help it and you can take some help from chat GPT or AI. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's, it's simple, no, Naveen. Uh, back in the day, when mm. we did not have uh, cell phones, uh, mm. you know, uh, we used to remember all the phone numbers. Mm. But now, if there is an emergency, 
Okay, all the phone numbers are are written down in the phone. You don't even remember. So if you have to call home, then also you have to start scratching your head. Oh, oh my God, what was my home phone number? How do I call my dad? How do I call my mom? You don't know. So that's like over reliance on on a particular technology. Hmm. Something similar is going to happen here as well. Correct. Well, on on similar lines, there is <coughs> another question. What's your thought on no code automation driven by AI? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a very rational thought about it, about the no code automation driven by AI. Maybe some people, they won't like my statement here, but see, if you are calling your, uh, I think, um, uh, if you're calling yourself as a no code automation tester or something like this, and you're not doing automation without writing the code and then just simple plain sentences that you're writing, I don't want to take. Uh, tools name here, but then then don't call yourself as an automation engineer. Automation is a skill, is all about writing and developing something, right? It's not about just prompt you are giving and then it's giving you the all the test cases and then writing the code for you or some no code automation that you are writing. Or okay, click on this, enter this, plain English that you are writing. But where is your code? Where is the language? Where is the compiler? Where is the right where is the logic that you have written you are just simple writing plain english sentence then don't call yourself as an automation or as dead engineer that's my perception that's what i believe because automation is all about equivalent to your development where you are writing the code as i mentioned earlier you have to debug your code you have to run it you have to refactor it you have to follow certain patterns design patterns in the specific uh, language you have to use the specific apis tool specific libraries that you have to create a lot of generic utilities and everything that you have to create. And then you have to make sure that, okay, the, the kind of automation and the code that I have written is actually working properly or not. And the maintenance and the refactor will come into the picture later on. But with a no code automation, you don't need to think about it because uh, the tool is actually thinking about it, which is driven by AI. And uh, maybe the tool is having 90% expertise to, you know, visual uh, analyze the test cases and everything, but still, for your personal growth point of view, I think uh, there is no much growth available there. Maybe, uh, in fact, no code automation, I'm not saying they are bad, but I'm saying they are useful in such cases where you have, let's see, for example, you don't want to set up the entire automation team. You don't have a maybe budget for that. Maybe the product management, they really want to write quick test cases through this particular AI tool or something like this, or no code test automation, they're using it and then executing it and running, running it. They don't believe in that, okay, maintaining a big automation framework or common automation framework repositories and everything because they don't have much amount of work available for that. And they don't have any budget also to handle or to set up the entire automation team as well. So in such cases, maybe uh, you can use these AI automation tool, but obviously for your learning point of view, if you have an aspiration of uh, writing the code and becoming a good tester or with automation skills and everything, I think uh, uh, you should focus more on the open source and the code automation instead of codeless automation. So on that line, I want to ask you something. Okay. Um, mm. Why is it important for me to learn coding so much as a test? Why? Mm -hmm. See, I'm not saying so much, like you have to be really great in coding. See, first of all, that, see uh, what I believe that if you are a software engineer, then you have to justify that you are a software engineer. You are writing, you're calling yourself automation engineer or SJ. Then you have to connect with the programming language also. I'm not saying Java is good or Python is good. Any programming language. All the languages are great, good. But when you learn coding, it will open your mindset. It will, you will think about differently. You will try to think, okay, yeah, this is a, this is a way I can solve these kind of problems. Not only for automation. There are so many use cases you can solve with. We have discussed many times, you can create your own test data. You can just create some amazing utilities to dump the data into the system before writing, before executing the script. Some small, small utilities to fetch the data from PDF, Excel, and all those things, you can do it. In fact, I have seen people, they actually in my previous company, they were doing it, and then they were drastically improving the performance of the time. I mean, performance and the manual arts also, they are improving it a lot because they have those utilities. Right. So you can use those things for automation. You can write the code for that. And the coding, if you understand, you understand, okay, how exactly the system is behaving, system design and the coding, then you will be able to interact with the developers properly. 
that the way they are thinking, the language and the mindset then matches. I have seen people having 15 years experience, no coding experience, nothing. The moment they talk to developer, they get the inferiority complex. That, okay, no, it's not my cup of tea. They always talk at a very superficial level, at the very high level that, okay, no, this feature is not working, but why? At least go and check which method, yes. which logs, which where exactly you're getting the panic in the stage environment or production environment, and you go and check the logs. If this yes. particular uh, commit is breaking the code, go and check the unit test cases, SIT test cases, check the integration is happening or not. This API is giving the right response or not. You can check method level, library level, class level, exception is coming in this particular line. You can just check the what kind of data these people are using or not. You can check all the null checks and everything. You can contribute for the uh, unit testing as well in that case. So this will give you a lot of advantages if you learn coding. You understand the development process better. And that is going to help you a lot in your testing process as well, for sure. So uh, are you trying to say that knowledge of coding mm. will help me understand the product better because I understand what is going on under the hood and mm. I can talk to the developers in the same language that they are talking. Mm. Also, I can connect with people like the architect or somebody like that so okay. that I have a better understanding of the product. Is that what you're trying to say? See, you as a tester, you are having the biggest advantage about that you are a tester. You have the product knowledge, domain knowledge, plus the coding skills. This coding skills or understand the code, understand the design, understand the backend will help you a lot to discuss with the people. So this is what the in inferiority complex we were talking about, right? The tester has no respect, no good package, but testers are having good respect in the package if you are technically good. Right. It's not about only and only the edge cases that you are finding. Definitely, that's your prime job. But to enhance those things, to talk and communicate with other developers or architect, or you're talking to a CTO and you have to present something yeah. in uh, you know to uh, in front of CTO. How do you talk to a CTO? CTO is a chief technical officer. He's a good techie guy, and they they want some same kind of support and language from you guys as well. Right. If they are asking about, OK, can you do a POC on this particular automation tool, the design and everything? This is the way that we have designed, let's see, the Kafka messaging queue in the back end that we are using it or data pipelines and CICD processes that we have implemented in that way. These are the integration is uh, happened like that. And then you're totally blank in that case. So this is not going to help much because these days systems are very, very complex. A lot of uh, distributed and integrated systems are talking to each other. You have to understand the design in the back end and everything not only rely on the ui part <clears throat> and only the front end part uh yeah you you've mentioned a very good thing about talking to the cto and i just want to share one experience here if if, if it's mm -hmm. okay so uh back in the day um i was managing a team of i think 30 40 testers mm -hmm. but then uh, our cto came up with a brilliant idea of the company having their own crowdsourcing platform because those days crowd testing platform and those mm. days uTest was doing really well as a platform mm. and they were get doing a lot of business so our, our company thought why not uh, venture into something like this and uh, because I had previous uTest experience as well so I knew how to get into the nitty gritties of of uh, of this and a little bit of nitty gritties but mm. For us to technically implement the solution, hmm. it was so much going back and forth with the CTO with those pinpointed questions. And I hmm. had to explain to him everything technically. Hmm. You know, what will happen, what, what features we will need to implement, how we need to implement those. Okay, what technology will be there underlying. You know, you are you require a lot of backend support. So hmm. how strong your backend support is going to be in case of a a platform such as that, then then do you want to have a front end interface which is similar to what you test had in those mm. days, or do you want to create something different? Then what technology are you going to use there? How will you test it yourself? Because if you are a testing platform and if you have not tested it yourself, then you mm. are in a big soup, right? So how will you test that platform? What is your test strategy? Okay, yes. how much automation will you bring in? What are the pieces that cannot be tested using automation? All of this had to be explained. So it mm. is very important that, that I had to speak in that technical language to mm. the architects of the system, to the various you know, business leaders 
uh, in that system, explaining to them in a very technical language. Okay, mm. even though they were from business side, but they were technically very sound people. So you know they had to understand because they were going to seek investment from mm. the investors based on that, right? So uh, it is very important, and, and you mentioned something very nice there that you know uh, our communication is one basic thing and this is my interpretation of what you said it's something that keeps us going in our jobs if you know the technology well and if you can explain it well then you sustain in that job longer right you are talking to the developer you are talking to the architect you are talking to the manager you are talking to the cto everybody is seeing you you are more visible so people will start seeing your value correct so that is where this is so valuable i mean we don't think about all this in general but that is one big benefit i want to take one <laughs> interesting question um i saw this and yeah we can uh, continue we'll uh, let me just check the questions yeah 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 again ai related so um um can we use gemini and generative ai tools in our automation testing when we give prompt it's giving the code yeah see gaja same thing same problem you know like just like chat gpt you give the prompt it will give you the uh, code. the complete code whatever the code you want to generate it will give it to you either correct or not but it looks very fancy when you get the code copy paste and then use it and then done but again think about your learning point of view it depends on your experience and everything but let's say for for me i know that okay this is how it will work and i don't want to write that specific code because i know it will take a lot of time so maybe just quickly generate from the prompt and then copy paste and then do it and then continue but i focus and uh, use my mind later whenever it's when the complex use case or complex logic that i have to write then i'll try to write right by myself so i'm not saying these generative ai tools are really bad or something like this but don't do for any single thing i have seen in my training i have seen people they actually accepted that navin we are so addicted to these tools so addicted yeah. to ai tools or chat gpt that for every small thing you won't believe that for every small thing they are using chat gpt in fact to reply an email also they are using chat gpt i mean this is a level of addiction that i have seen that and some see you have to have we will talk about as maybe in a different discussion maybe take a separate question the kind of content we are getting on social media the blogs people <laughs> are creating we are losing the creativity we are losing the human touch the intelligent intelligence that actually we are losing it same thing with the coding also please don't totally rely on this it's not about that 100% it's correct sometimes it will give you so confidently that okay yeah this is a thing in fact uh, <clears throat> i was checking something on chat gpt about the string immutability on in java with the on chat gpt that how exactly it is working and that's it was totally wrong concept given by chat gpt yes I was yes telling yes, something yes. i was like what and then i corrected and then they chat gpt accepted it also okay now i apologize and then i know i mean it's correct according to this and all so don't 100% rely on it it is giving you you have to identify which method which logic which library which class in a specific uh, tool or specific library that you have to use it especially if you are very new that is your learning age you know learning cycle is there and then you have to learn by writing the code by your own this will give you a lot of confidence after that chat gpt or whatever is coming in the future it is going to help you a lot after that so this is this is one thing okay using these tools to generate code to to probably use in automation testing but hmm. there is another side of the spectrum there are tools that claim that they have features which use ai yes okay and there is, there is a question there is there is a question on that as well this comes mm. from sundar sandeep he is asking mm. hi rajesh and navin with tools like tricentis copado robotic have mm. a feature with self healing would you please throw some light on such features so mm. you know this self healing is just one feature but mm. there are tools that that claim that they have multiple features which are powered by ai so how can you say no to those those tools navin come on 
No, I, I agree. Because in fact, I'll take their names. Playwright is there. Playwright Auto Library is there. You write an English prompt, and you just go to Playwright uh, Auto on Google. You will get a sample. You just write, fill this registration form. One English sentence you have to write in your code. The moment yeah. you land on the registration page, it will fill the entire form with the logical data, <coughs> with the logical test data also. You don't need to write any, you know, find element dot click dot send keys and A B C D and all those things. No X path, nothing. It will just fill the things there. So yes, these prompts are there. People, I mean, in fact, the tools they have used it. They have integrated with the uh, Chat GPT, Open AI keys, and then uh, but you have to pay for it. So Tricent is, and all these people. In fact, Reflect also is there. I have, uh, I, yeah. So I had a discussion with the Todd as well, the Reflect uh, co-founder, and then he actually shown this particular feature and really loved it. For any complex form, is there or some specific task that you really want to perform on that? You can use it, and then it's good to have it. Same thing for the self healing. Self healing, if it is really working, sometimes what happens that uh, <clears throat> you know I I mentioned about earlier also about the C lights. What exactly yeah. C lights, Mabel, and Testim IO? These tools are there. What exactly they and Helenium also there, which will heal your locator automatically the moment any changes in the UI or any workflow changes happened. So immediately it will update your test cases accordingly. So that's a good use case of the AI can be used in our uh, testing and test automation. Definitely, we can do it. So that's my yeah. perception. We respect and uh, welcome uh, these kind of features. Yeah, in fact, in fact, there are tools like uh, Apply Tools or even mm -hmm. uh, you know TestResults.io, which are working on visual regression. Okay, mm -hmm. and and they have certain features which are AI enabled, which which help you with visual regression, which I think is very cool use of mm. technology in mm. bringing those features to the front. So, so while it is a good idea to be using these features, I think it is very important that as a tester, you know how these features are getting implemented. Mm. Because not all tools will have this feature. Not everywhere will you be able to use these features of, of the product. So mm. if you know how to write code, you can obviously do the modifications according to your situation. Hmm. Right, so it is very important that that you do it that way. <clears throat> now, moving further, I want to uh, talk about you know um, something very very close to my heart. Hmm. Okay, uh, this has been troubling me a lot. Okay, okay. for many many years now, hmm. and we have discussed about it, hmm. but this has troubled me a lot. I want mm. to know your view on this. Mm. Back in the day, we started with discussions on manual versus automation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm. that discussion still continues. Mm. Every second day, there is a post. Okay. Mm. Then we had a wave of Cypress versus Selenium. Mm. Then uh, we had functional versus non functional. Mm. Now we have the new kid on the block called Playwright. And it is Selenium versus uh, Playwright. What is your thought on this whole versus thing? I mean, hmm. Why this versus that is necessary in testing? Why is that? Hmm. See, le quickly, like manual versus automation versus type of what, testing or something like this. End of the day, it's testing. Either you are doing it. Uh, manually or with the tool or without tool it's end of the day it's just a testing so i always believe in this thing that 100 percent automation sometime i mean obviously not possible you have to put your uh, mind and your testing abilities to test that particular application so end of the day it's testing you're doing it through some tool without tool or whatever it's up to you Okay, it depends on your skill set and your project and management and everything. But this versus thing, especially with the tool, the new guys are there in the market like Playwright or Cypress and this versus this. I think, uh, again, without any research, without any proper data, 30% people are using Playwright nowadays. <clears throat> What's from where that 30%, 70% came into the picture? Show me the data. You can save 40% of the performance <clears throat> with the Playwright because of this and this and that, but there are no research about it. Suddenly you got some idea or some number, 40%, 50% or something like this. 
which is uh, totally bullshit according to me i don't believe in this thing frankly speaking uh, and in fact any experienced guy or any knowledgeable guy who is actually good knowledge in the test automation they won't trust on these things in fact i don't want to take names here in fact recently somebody has written on linkedin that if you are working on the new application a brand new application always use playwright i was like on what basis why playwright why not cypress or selenium or xyz tool why only playwright why there is a lobby behind for you know for a specific tool i'm not taking the favor of selenium or playwright or cypress or anything all these tools are great and amazing everyone is having their own pros and cons but do some research automation depends on many factors ask the questions to your team what is the right fit for your automation first of all is it a right time to start automation or not if it is do a poc talk to the team do a poc on multiple tools and then think about according to your use cases according to your requirement budget skill set of your team resources future for next two years do you have any plan if not then don't pick any random tools which tool is justifying the criteria <laughs> then pick the tool accordingly not like blindly no i'll go with the playwright because playwright looks very fancy these days it's not like that because playwright is having the auto wait feature it means you don't understand the auto wait feature in that case frankly speaking this is my perception so this selenium versus playwright and all those thing in fact selenium guys they have written a blog recently i was about to share on linkedin also a few days back that uh, they clearly written the clickbait done by the specific community with the playwright that okay with the cypress that okay no this these fancy tools are coming and they are actually uh giving the selenium comparison the selenium is lacking in these thing and that's why these tools came into the picture which is absolutely a clickbait through thumbnail on youtube videos or something like that so that misconception and the misinformation in the market right it recently happened in chicago with the selenium conference somebody asked that okay why selenium does not provide any auto wait feature yeah. and simon stewart clearly said that we are not responsible for that you have to decide when to put a wait Correct. you have to decide before entering the value in the text field you have to decide If you really want to apply the auto wait, write a generic function with the implicitly wait or explicitly wait or web driver wait or fluent wait, and then call it as a generic function whenever it's required. We are not a deciding factor. We are not deciding that when to put auto wait, but Playwright provides auto wait. So I mean, these are the very minute discussions I really want to highlight. Don't compare the tools just randomly. Do a POC if it is completely fit for you. Go for it. you are picking let's see coming from the java or python background suddenly you are giving a pressure to use playwright with a typescript to think about yeah. the productivity as well that is also major factor this is also where the productivity drastically will be reduced why because no one knows typescript and nobody is having the motivation to learn typescript frankly yeah. speaking sometime because yeah. i'm coming from java background from last 10 years why should i learn a new programming language suddenly then i have to change my entire tech stack with that specific language only that the framework the unit testing framework the testing framework the pipelines and everything then according to i have picked for that particular tool or for that particular language then in that case so this is the uh, my my opinion about it actually versus versus thing <laughs> uh that no that is uh, absolutely true i i agree with what you're saying i yeah. have seen so much uh, you know uh, i i think i i think uh, in our chat that we were having the other day uh, when mm. we came up with the thought of having this discussion you mentioned something very important mm. you know um, although uh, playwright is is now of course you know things are things look free and all that but there is a company behind playwright and and uh, and and you do not know when they are going to make it profitable like what happened with cypress right so so um, that's that's maybe one reason why they are trying to proliferate the tool to increase adaptability so that once there is enough adaptability you bring in the paid features and and you make profit out of it correct do you think that may be a strategy behind these these tools <laughs> <laughs> see everyone is here, everyone is here in the market to you know to make it profitable if right. microsoft has established a team from chromium because earlier it was puppeteer and now the mm -hmm. entire team hired by microsoft to implement uh, playwright right. so obviously there is a vision behind that nothing right. is uh, because you think about for the selenium point of view it's a community driven absolutely 
सर वो इतने गरीब लोग हैं दे आर लाइक आस्किंग फॉर द यू नो डोनेशन सपोर्ट चैरिटी वी ऑल्सो पेड सो दैट इज वॉट so this is a community driven project you should not compare and still you see the you see the umbrella of selenium like the everywhere in every project these days selenium is being used because of stability because of the powerful features that they have given and the simplicity also that they have given absolutely so i'm not saying that okay i'm taking favor of selenium i'm saying there is a motto behind that same thing with the cypress or other tools also those tools are good no doubt about it and there is no tomorrow if i'm the business owner definitely i'll think about my profitability also right it's because i have to pay the bills also for the developers and the team and everything so dashboard is now having a pricing model same thing happened with the catalon same thing with norm you never know in future after one year you get to know that okay the playwright specific features of playwright dashboard is actually paid so um think about in that area as well well the best example of this is uh, how uh, chat gpt came when chat gpt came out when it was gpt 3.5 it was free and as soon as they they very quickly they were the fastest to hit a million users mark fastest tool which got to a million users and when as soon as they hit a certain benchmark they released gpt4 uh, and made it paid yeah you have to pay, pay. <laughs> yeah. To pay. It, yeah so so it was a very smart move from a business point of view and those who got addicted like you were saying earlier they said ah okay it's 20 dollars a month is subscribed and and how much money did did open ai make out of it i mean mm. you cannot even imagine with so mm. many users the adaptation was such so this is exactly what happens in the tool market well but as a yeah. one thing here that let's see from from last couple of years five years we have implemented a specific tool in the project if there are problems <coughs> with the tool try to enhance it try to uh, overcome with that problem and then try to do some experiment and then try to enhance the existing framework or refactor the existing framework instead of this is the problem with the management also sometimes they get to know some fancy tool in the market suddenly the they give a pressure to the team that no scrap everything implement play right now from the scratch let's hire play right team now let's hire these guys now are boss you are already having uh, from last 5 years and 2 years and 3 years you are already having this framework is already stable working perfectly fine then why don't you enhance it just refactor it and then add more and more test cases instead of building a new thing after one year again you think about another new tool in that case so there is no limit for that actually <clears throat> okay uh, as i was scr- scrolling through the chat i saw a good question from our friend <clears throat> tachin sharma uh, hi brijesh and navin sharing such exceptional knowledge is really great can you share how you both get this knowledge what is your way to learn these new things tell us the recipe okay so navin what is your recipe see it's very simple sachin um, the recipe is nothing is learn and experiment and then and publish and share with the people especially i got leverage that okay because i started as a teacher trainer now content creator on my channel so obviously i have to learn that is another motivation because of me uh, because of my content is somebody is getting the job that's the amazing feeling that you are getting it and uh, definitely that will enhance my profile also so it's all about your attitude also sometimes but okay no i really want to learn i really want to be top always that i really want to be relevant in the market all the time up to next let's say 10 years if you having that attitude definitely there are so many resources of learning it you just go to blogs youtube channel courses good some really amazing people like see dheeraj is also there i learn so many things from dheeraj yeah so so right in fact so very lo- i learned from many things from james yeah. when he presented some idea some really good idea about the contest testing and then uh, he actually wrote the code in php i think in perl i don't know exactly perl yes, yes. There are so many good people so you can learn from these people and then it's all about you know passion that you have to follow every day you have to learn and then don't leave the things in between if you really want to learn learn it finish it create yeah. a milestone create a target okay in next 15 days i have to learn this particular a tool or this particular language or whatever just plan it properly every day you have to practice i see yes. those excuses that okay no i am not getting enough time 9 to 5 job i'm really tired then boss don't watch netflix i mean that's my opinion i'm not saying that you have to do the exactly same thing then then do something on weekend join some courses go somewhere outside and then just learn from your friends or your some someone you have to learn that's the main motto that you have to learn by any 
my any hogan group so that is what the my inspiration or my motivation actually um yeah and since uh, sachin uh, has put my name also so i will also share my recipe well uh, well i i have always thrived on the quest for knowledge okay i want to know everything i want to know stuff how it works what is happening okay because tomorrow if somebody from my team is struggling i should mm. at least be able to communicate with that person Hmm. right so i i want to learn what is going on what is the problem how to solve it and hmm. that's why i i read a lot i read a lot of technical articles i listen to a lot of podcasts i watch a lot of videos i spend a lot of time uh, watching youtube videos watching navin's videos watching you know mukesh's videos watching hmm. videos from from raghav from sanjay you know some of the very good content creators who are who are putting out a lot of great stuff on youtube youtube is free right nobody is nobody is stopping you from from learning hmm. okay uh that's one thing the other thing is i believe in investing in knowledge hmm. you know uh, i have always right from the day i started earning i have always dedicated a part of my salary as my learning budget you know i want to learn i will spend so much money if i want to buy a book i will use that if i want to go to a conference i will use that i first ask my company if they are sending me to a conference or not if not i will pay it from my pocket and i will go because because i want to learn it is my selfish interest that i want to learn and when i learn i try to share that knowledge okay mm. if i get some resources i share uh, if you would have seen recently on linkedin i i shared certain resources mm. in fact yesterday also i shared a link from from our friend abhijit waikar okay mm. so we go ahead i go ahead and do that what happens is in response a lot of people come to me with asking for a lot of questions to which even i don't know the answer so i go ahead and find the answers to those questions so mm. you know that is my recipe that constant quest to learn and share knowledge mm. okay read a lot invest in your mm. own growth okay we do you know are we do for our financial security we do a lot of financial planning we do sip and fd and stuff like that for your career safety why are you not investing on knowledge is the question that i want to ask yes it will cost a little bit of money a little bit of effort a little bit of your time but there is a benefit to it tomorrow if you want to go and get a higher designation hmm. okay and if you believe that just because you have spent 2 years in the company in a particular position nobody is going to promote you until unless you show value until unless you show that knowledge and how do you get that knowledge by investing in in learning hmm. so my simple mantra is invest in learn that's it. correct i think it's a good and question i think on the dheeraj dheeraj from the budget yes. part that is there is anything i don't think there is anything wrong in the charging money if you are giving something <clears throat> that no one else is providing isn't it yeah what we are getting paid for also absolutely like absolutely I yeah i i completely agree on on that dheeraj uh, it is absolutely yeah. true i mean if they are giving something of value to you uh, they are all well within their rights to charge for it and like i said i mean the companies which are using these or the people who are using these should be willing to pay right that willingness is there so so absolutely no problem and you are absolutely right that is the reason why we are getting paid i completely agree with what you just said here yes so moving on uh, navin i have another interesting question i know you have mm-hmm. spoken about this like a mm-hmm. zillion times but this this one keeps coming back time mm-hmm. and again Hmm. and uh i am i am kind of uh, irritated by this time and again i want to know your thoughts okay what is a full stack qa <laughs> <laughs> i remember i think two years back i prepared a video on this in covid <laughs> no yes, you yes, you yes. Pre- you have done two videos okay the first one you you said something and in the ah. second one you corrected uh, what you said in the first video Uh-huh, uh huh. I remember. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, so full stack QA is a uh, is a master of everything. But uh, <clears throat> okay, see, full stack QA means all rounder who can bat also, who can do a wicket keeping also, can bowl also, field also, and captain also, and everything <laughs> you can do. Empire, Empire also. Empire also. <laughs> Everything that guy can do. So according to me, I think Polistech QA is, uh, I don't believe in this because practically sometimes it's not actually not possible. Because same thing with the, so Polistech means in the, let's say if in the complete project life cycle or in the different stack of the, of, of your product or project, you are responsible for the testing for that. It means yeah. you are responsible for the specific tool that you have to use it. If you are doing some backend, you should know all the backend tools. If you are at the front end, front end tools. If you are using some microservices, monolithic or security, performance, database or APIs, everything, you are having a full stack knowledge about the tool and you can use any specific tool for the entire stack. So have you okay. seen, in fact, uh, have you seen anyone who is a really expert in performance engineering plus security, functional automation, testing, database api testing and different tools and technologies and then taking care of the entire ecosystem of automation which is actually not possible and if it is possible also maybe they are not master into a specific thing they are just trying here and there a couple of things so that's why we have to hire some expertise same thing if you're doing an operation also a surgery also for a specific person it's not like okay anesthesia guy is coming so it's not like one doctor is taking care of entire thing and nobody is there in the operation theater yeah right so same thing in the automation field or in the software uh, development field also that full stack dev full stack qa especially full stack or sj automation engineer is according to me is a bogus term i don't uh, personally believe that because you cannot be master in each and every stack and then you cannot take the responsibility if you're doing it you're doing it wrong you have to delegate you have to make sure that okay security is taken care by someone else Performance is taken care by someone else. Functional part taken care by me, for example. And then other things will be taken care by other guys. Good. You should have some basic knowledge about it. You should have some basic knowledge that, okay, how exactly these things and these systems are working and which tool that I have to use. But having the 100% expertise and calling yourself full stack QA or full stack thing, it's according to me, not appropriate. Good one. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? <laughs> well... <laughs> I, I, I think in terms of questions. Okay. Uh, when do you know that your stack is full? Is the question that I want to ask. There's no okay. limit. Before that, before that, I want to ask, who is defining the stack? Are you talking about the tech stack for development? Or are you talking about the tech stack for, for testing? Uh, are these two stacks different? If yes, why? If no, why not? Okay. So I talk about these in terms of these questions and it's very funny that other day on linkedin i saw something really interesting hmm. what i saw was uh, a full stack recruiter hmm. and i was like okay how does that happen then uh, a few minutes later i saw a full stack marketing specialist hmm. okay and then uh, i saw uh, a full stack sales guy. So this hmm. full stack has is catching up like a virus. Okay, it's 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 uh, probably another cousin of COVID or something like that. It's just catching up far and wide. So obviously, as testers, we are also not safe from this. Hmm. But my thought is, the day I have a company, I want to call myself a full stack CEO. Hmm. <laughs> so the day that happens, I will probably accept this terminology. Hmm. Now, there is a big uh, shout out for you. Uh, so I I want to put this in and share it with everyone. Uh, it is from Avishek and he says, because of Naveen, I took expert session on Selenium in my company. I was surprised even 15 years meets uh, leverage from my learning. So well done, Abhishek, on that one. And uh, as usual, kudos to you, Naveen, for uh, for yeah. sharing that knowledge and, and enabling uh, Abhishek to do that great Abhishek. keep learning well, thanks great that okay you learn from me <laughs> Brish, you continue uh, I, just, I refresh i think some problem with my camera just i'll just join in two minutes you just continue yeah yeah i was about to say that that your video mm -hmm. is pausing kind of so 
Okay, while Naveen fixes his camera, there is uh, a question. Can you talk about security testing? Why isn't it much test upon in the QA lane? Well, uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, security testing is, of course, uh, the problem is that, you know, uh, we've before I talk about this specific thing, let me just focus on some, some element. Okay. Um, just a few questions ago, I asked about a certain divide in the testing fraternity, the versus thing. So there is a lot of this versus that happening in, in the industry. And, uh, you know, what happens is that as a result of that divide, people are often getting into classifications like functional and non-functional testing. And uh, as you would have it, there is a lot of impetus, a lot of focus that is given on functional part of the testing. Okay. And the non-functional element is uh, seemingly ignored because people always say, oh, we can do the non-functional testing later. So whether it is performance or security or scalability or anything of that sort, that is, uh, you know, um, so Naveen, I'm, I'm talking about this particular question. Um, so, uh, you know, so essentially what is happening is people are talking about non-functional elements much later because they think it is not that important. Hmm. Now, if you observe very closely, you will observe that to get to your performance or hmm. to get to your security, you have to execute your functionality as well. Hmm. So in its real sense, even performance and security testing are a part of functional testing only. You do not need to have a separate classification for them and call them specifically as non-functional and then ignore them. So first of all, it should not be on the sidelines. It is hmm. on the sidelines because people are not thinking much about it. You're absolutely right, Kashyap, that you know uh, people are treating it as uh, a step son or step daughter. And that's why they are looking at it much later and sometimes completely ignoring. Hmm. And that's why I, I keep saying that, you know, security testing, performance testing, they're they are all often a result of an afterthought of an afterthought. First of all, testing itself comes as an afterthought to a lot of organizations. Hmm. And security and performance comes as an afterthought of that afterthought. When a customer complains that, oh, my, my data has been breached or something, my website has been hacked, only then the companies will start thinking about security testing. Hmm. When the customer complains or user complain about performance issues, only then people will start thinking about performance. Hmm. So this has been the trend. It, it is ignored because, you know, it is, of course, important. It is a little time consuming. It is a little expensive to do these, these tests. Hmm. But, uh, you know, in all honesty, they should very much be a part of your test strategy if you are building hmm. one. So mm -hmm. if you are uh, a tester in an organization and if you are responsible for, uh, you know, testing in your project, you are, of course, responsible being the tester. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can make the suggestion to whoever is making the test plan. If you are making it, then you should include it. If your manager is working on it or if you are working with a product owner or developers, you should mm -hmm. always bring, bring, bring these things and emphasize on these testing to be done as well. And that's how you are showing your value once again. That's right. what I think. Naveen, what do you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kashyap, absolutely. Like not much focused, not in fact, uh, recently it's, it's been actually missing from a couple of years and from last 10 years, I have seen the problem sometimes with the management also. If they just mentioned that they feel it okay, just like a stepbrother or, or stepson. Because uh, management says, what will you do with the performance testing or security testing? We will see it later. Let it go to the production. You just focus on the functional part. <laughs> and that to functional part also, okay, just check upar upar se and high level and then just go for it. This is this is the thing that we sometimes we get the support from the management also. I have personally seen that my manager was saying, engineering manager was saying, or the CEO of the company was saying, no, no, don't focus on these things right now. Just publish to the production and deploy and then we will see later after that and then then your uh, some cyber attacks or some other vulnerabilities are coming then they will think about then then you have to you know uh, hire one security expert or, or something like this yeah. and the performance tuning performance engineering that we have to perform so it actually 
depends on the mindset depends on company to company management to manage management project to project if your manager is really focused upon these things and there are some really good companies i have seen uh, especially in e-commerce when i was with walmart and cisco that time they were very particular about uh, these kind of use cases performance engineering and the security they were having dedicated team for that and they have outsourced the complete security testing to some other third party team in in netherlands so uh, i mean they were doing some amazing work and i know it's not a regular activity every day that we have to do performance testing and the security that's why maybe because of that it's not that popular in the in the community right now because uh, once in a while you have to test it once your system is established or something then you have to perform the security and everything but i think it's a uh, very high time we should focus upon these things as well so tools like pint is there which is taking care of uh, uh, you know which is taking amazing tool which is taking care of all the api level and back end level security analysis it's doing and then absolutely, giving absolutely. you the reports and everything burp suit is there so there are many tools which are actually yeah so uh, <laughs> navin on on the same lines i want to ask you this there is a lot of focus in the industry on on uh, you know growing as a tester or senior tester and then you know somewhere down the line they lose the hmm. the growth path and suddenly hmm. they start thinking about becoming a product owner or a scrum hmm. master or something like this hmm. how about getting some specialization hmm. as a, you know as a performance tester or a security hmm. tester or yeah. a user experience tester you mm-hmm. know these are certain specializations which exist in in the industry mm-hmm. so how about that what would you advise to especially mm-hmm. the younger lot to not mm-hmm. lose hope and do yeah. something about this yes i absolutely agree because uh, these something are very high profile and high paid jobs if you are a performance uh, engineer and then doing some amazing things because it's something very unique and niche which is making you unique from others because if you hire a performance engineering guy or let's say security testing guy it's not that easy to find a right resource right uh, in the market so that's why obviously that uh, your demand will be very high and then you can negotiate and there are a lot of good things you can do bug bounty programs and everything you can be involved join some amazing conferences on the security testing and the performance there also you can meet some really amazing people it's a great career you cannot i mean you should not think if you are into this, this thing you cannot think okay after 10 years 15 years i really want to be a manager they still want to do the same thing learning new things lot of penetration testing and new tools and technologies they really want to learn so for youngsters instead of wasting your time on uh, you know unnecessary chat gpt prompt engineering testing courses and everything better you focus on on the, these amazing things that will help you a lot in your career <laughs> again you bring this chat gpt and and uh, <laughs> i want to put you on the spot navin <laughs> okay. will we ever see a role of an ai tester and if we if we see what will be the job description of that i was asking this question that <laughs> giving a title of ai tester that you tell me what will you write tell me five important bullet points in the job description <laughs> <laughs> so what is your thought what will be there in the job description <laughs> Okay. AI tester, what like? What is AI tester like? Something AI tester will test something like, like. Okay, 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 okay. So let's take two, two scenarios. Okay, one is uh, AI tester is testing the hmm. AI powered features of a particular product. Number hmm. one, hmm. and number two, AI tester is using AI to test a particular product. Correct. So in so, these yeah. two scenarios, uh, do you think a job description is possible? uh i know see end of the day you are testing a system which is ai enabled or not enabled with the ai so if see for example if i ask you that you have to test on application which is hosted on aws and they are using a lot of aws cloud services mm-hmm. so obviously i'm expecting something from you that you should know about those services on cloud and then you should know how to deploy if i deploy it say cd over there or some data pipelines over there you should know how to use those services so i'm yes. expecting yes. that expertise or that knowledge from you guys as a tester so that you can go there and you can test it same thing if i really want to test which is ai enabled product or ai enabled features are there i really need to know about the basic fundamentals of ai those different models are there npm or llm or those basic machine learning models which are available that how to test it so i'll define a different strategy 
for that. So maybe in the job description somewhere, I can write that, okay, fine. You should have a knowledge about the AI enabled product, how to test it, how to prepare the test data for that, how to test and download those models, and then how to check these models are giving the right prediction or not. And the right use cases I'll be writing around that particular corner. But uh, ultimately, end of the day, it's actual testing. You are doing it. Like otherwise, I can say Facebook tester or LinkedIn tester also, <laughs> right? With the with the same terminology, if I really want to use. So I don't think so. That AI tester something will be very fancy, and I I don't think so. Ultimately, it's a tester. You have to test it. Either it is AI enabled. Okay, let me learn the AI, and then whatever the tools and technologies that they are using in the system, and then let me just check it and test it accordingly. All right. Okay. Uh, now some very specific questions. A question that has been repeating hmm. a lot from Ravish. Uh, is uh, is asked this i think a zillion times what is the scope of graphql in automation in future yeah ravish graphql is very important these days it's there are two types of or multiple types of apis but let's see one is typical rest api that you are using it in graphql it's actually query based or mutation based apis which you can implement and then you can just instead of fetching the entire json or entire data you can query that okay no i just want a specific data from the database or from the server. So GraphQL will give you the specific data instead of giving the huge JSON payload. So it's a very regular thing these days. A lot of companies, they started using the GraphQL in the backend. And then uh, obviously you have to learn. It's not about doing automation or not. If you are using a GraphQL, then definitely you can automate also. You can automate with the rest assured or in Postman also, you can write the, you can do the automation manual testing with the, for the GraphQL as well. So yeah. scope is great. You should learn about it. It's a part of the backend and you should, it should be there in your bucket. As well. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so um, moving further, I want to ask you about certain misconceptions that are there in the, hmm. in the industry. Uh, would you like to start with some from your end? What are some of the biggest misconceptions that, that we have around testing in 2024? Like still we are debating about manual versus automation and the titles and then the right definition of testing and then automation will, uh, automation is everything. And then survival of a tester without upgrading with the manual testing or a basic thing also. I mean, I can survive. No 100% automation. 100% automation is a regular myth always, like forever. Other than that, uh, other than that, I think uh, in the QA community, I feel that uh, we are actually, you know, focusing on putting the things in terms of definition and everything instead of learning new things. So that debate generally I don't prefer. And uh, I think we should focus on the learning and teach good things and the right things, according to your opinion, your expertise and everything, better we focus on that thing instead of uh, running behind the title and the right uh, definition or right keyword of using, I mean, using the right keyword all the time. So that is what, otherwise people are actually always confused at what is wrong and what is right. And then unnecessary no, comparison of, you know, these tools. Yeah. No, I, I, I have a slightly different opinion on that one, Naveen, uh, okay. to be very specific. I think we as testers should be specific about the language that we are talking. Mm -hmm. However, the language that we are talking should <laughs> be in line with the context in which we are working. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and should make sure that we are passing the same, the correct, accurate message to our stakeholders. Okay. Absolutely. Who are the most important people? Right. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, everything else is just noise. Right. Mm -hmm. If if you want to use certain terminology, you have to be very specific with the terminology that is used in your context. Mm -hmm. You can't use random terminology that is used, mm -hmm. you know, worldwide, market wide. But in your context, in your organization, if your leaders want to hear something in a certain way, and that is a part of the culture and that is a part of the organization. Mm -hmm. Unless you are planning to, you know, uh, remove your CEO and become a CEO <laughs> next morning and mm -hmm. say, okay, this is going to be the language of the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it is very important for us testers to follow that. 
correct however you make a very good point that instead of getting into these futile debates it is very much important that we focus on what is there next what hmm. are we going to do how do we learn how do we get better hmm. now on on that line uh, when we are talking about getting better um what are some of the best resources that you suggest mm-hmm. for testers to use so that they get better see the best resource is a real time learning frankly speaking no other course will can make you perfect not my course or my channel or others channel no doubt there are experts and then people criticize youtubers also that okay you guys are just getting the money from youtube it's not like that it's all about the passion it's all about sharing the experience on the youtube also and then sharing a knowledge so that it will motivate us and whatever the knowledge that we have gained in our you know career we really want to share we really want to solve a specific use case and then giving to the community this is how we learn and we grow in the as a community so the resources are so many good people are there you can learn from these people experienced people and always learn people who are actually expertise in their specific domain and then actually working in the real time projects this is my philosophy always to learn from the people who are actually work in the industry who actually see the war, jo- war zone and then learn from those people not like uh, i mean not like um, you know who is just giving the basic knowledge and then then very superficial knowledge about it that is not going to help us much but there are so many resources and sometimes uh, these resources are actually becoming web pollution also on youtube and in the form of blogs in the form of after again chat gpt copy paste content and medium blogs people they have started writing and then you just give the script and it will pre- prepare a video also these these ai tools are available in the market and then publishing on the channel and then robot is saying something no that is not a learning you have to learn, focus on the raw learning where opening the intellij and writing the code explaining the things see guys this is how we can do this is how we can use this particular tool and terminal i mean method and everything this is how we can implement the thing what do you think about it so at least giving and getting some good idea about it and then after that the real time learning that you're learning from your from your project with your experience with your team and with your colleagues and everyone so i think these are the best resources according to me for your knowledge because what i how exactly i learn i learn from my seniors from my and uh, from a team from a developers also in fact they used to correct me no no this is not the right way of writing the code this is not the right way of doing the things so you can do something like this then i was like okay let me experiment it let me learn and then let me just implement it so eventually it will start i mean eventually it will gonna benefit giving the benefit a lot in terms of implementing the right things and writing the right things there so this is my source of learning on this um so i i think that is that is that those are some good ones especially the fact about learning from real time experience uh what i have also seen in my experience and uh, navin i i don't i i want to know your thoughts hmm. you know uh, the state of testing education hmm. not just in india but worldwide is quite poor hmm. right the way we teach testing to other testers is hmm. quite poor okay there is there are very little number of people who insist on real time training on real time projects a lot of it comes from just going through the istqb syllabus mm-hmm. and try to pick up stuff from there and mm-hmm. then people make videos out of it people mm-hmm. write blogs and like you have said you know people just go to chat gpt and say okay write an article for me and then the mm-hmm. same article is published and mm. what you said is web pollution that's a nice term i'm going to use that so mm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. this this noise how do you think we can help cutting out this noise what should we do as testers to cut out this noise and and understand oh this is a good content or this is bad content for me to learn how how do i filter that see the good content is always which is uh, helping somewhere you to solve a specific problem plus your learning because of that knowledge uh, you are actually cracking interviews and then implementing the things in your current project so no one can teach you 100% frankly speaking in fact i cannot teach you 100% through my channel through my training or anything somewhere you have to practice after the session and after the training and after the youtube video 
you have to write your code you have to practice you have to open your eclipse implement the things and then implement uh, in your project as well so this is how we uh, we actually learn but how to identify what is right or what is uh, wrong always check and try to see that how consistent the profile of that you know educator the trainer from where exactly it is coming from and then all those things i think that matters a lot according to me plus uh, you can learn from anyone it's not about you you have to learn from the experienced people only you have to maybe you can learn from a fresher also that fresher is also these days having some really good knowledge about it and then they are doing some amazing work and everything so you can learn so you should always be open learn from different type of people either it is a fresher or a senior guy or something but yeah but don't uh, uh i would say focus too much on the you know theoretical knowledge you know top 100 interview questions although i also prepared <laughs> i i prepared that. i prepared <laughs> yeah top 100 questions or top 200 questions if i go through it it will help me in you know in the long term that is not going to help because what if they are asking some out of the box question out of those question then you have to be uh, you know answerable for that <clears throat> but you know doesn't that come from this attitude of learning just for the interview and not learning for for yeah that is also very poor thing and the people they this they talk i mean because as a youtuber i get these kind of queries don't i don't want to learn again i don't want to spend time for next 3 months and 4 months you just give me top 100 questions and there's just somehow i just want to crack my interview that's it that's my prime thing after that i'll take care of it i mean that's a, this is a thing so what will you say in that case that's no <laughs> motto nothing just only motto is that only target is just to crack interviews and getting a smart package and then just somehow i want to get into a in a good salary package band and then i really after that i'll take care of it so that is i think the wrong attitude according to me i mean you should focus on uh, forget about interviews you focus on your right learning right things interview will be cracked automatically maybe some extra yeah. effort that you have to put what are your weaknesses where exactly you're lacking you just need to improve that how exactly you're giving the interviews and the questions good examples how exactly you're different from others little bit of uh, you know diplomatically also you have to give the answer sometime at a time of interview so that you can impress You, because it's all about you, right? It's your interview, not for your entire team interview. So you have right. to have those skills along with your technical skills, along with your knowledge. Definitely, you can inter crack interviews after that. Right, right. There is this interesting question from Priyanka, and she's been asking it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Why companies are still not ready to accept automation? They don't yeah, feel right. confident. How to make this better? they're still not companies or management are not ready to accept automation they don't feel confident how to make this better see sometimes it it happens because maybe they just want to go with the regular things they don't want to experiment new things in terms of automation in terms of new things they still feel that okay you no know, testing is just a side job once everything is done okay take two days of time test it and then release so i'm not saying that you have to go and then do some um, uh you know make a noise and then raise your voice there you put your efforts educate try to educate them if something is not happening it's all about your career and all about your learning because you have to it's all about you know your thing so if if it's not in their if not in your hand and then management is not ready to take it or not ready to take new initiatives then you think about maybe there are a lot of other options also in the market in that case okay uh, while i we were discussing this question popped up okay <laughs> and i <laughs> and i want to again put you on the spot what is your opinion on no code and partial code testing tools versus hmm. <laughs> selenium cypress and playwright i think we <laughs> i think we have already taken this but again i uh, darshan i would say that if you saying yourself as a no code automation tester then don't say automation tester in that case frankly speaking because automation means yeah. you have to write your code you have to debug your code you have to refactor you have to you know proper development mindset you should have it along with your testing things but you're just writing the no code or low code thing that is not making you an automation engineer
Here's another uh, interesting question uh, from Samir. And Samir is asking, I have one question with time and experience. What is more important, your depth of knowledge or your breadth of knowledge? Different companies have different asks on this. What's your take? I think, Rajesh, you are the right person for the answer. <laughs> Well, okay, so uh, so I I would say uh, you go deep and you go wide as well. So you basically have to go diagonally. Okay, mm. there's no one direction that you go. You have to know a lot of things, but you know you should have a focus on what you want to choose as your expertise uh, as your area of expertise. Let's mm. be realistic. I mean, it is not possible to know everything. Okay, so it's very important that that there is if, if there is one tool that you want to know, then mm. know it really well. Be mm. an expert in that. Okay, mm. uh, obviously when you talk about technology, uh, one technology if you have enough knowledge, you will obviously be able to crack the other technologies which are similar to, no mm. matter what. So it is mm. important in my opinion that you know one tool very well. For example. And I can take Naveen's example, you know, he works on so many tools, so many tools. But I think, Naveen, correct me if I am wrong, if there is one tool where you would call yourself as a complete, as, as an expert, it would be something like Selenium. Hmm, we can would say it that, be yeah. fair to say that? Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so that is one clear example where, you hmm. know, you pick up one tool where you completely get involved and because you know that tool so well, you are able to exercise that knowledge into mm. learning other tools which are similar to it, mm. right? That knowledge, that foundation that you get will help you to crack other tools as well. So Correct. from a tool knowledge perspective, this is how it is. Now, and another, another important thing is, the reason why I said you have to go diagonally is one area which companies are insisting in, for knowledge, mm -hmm. looking for knowledge and of late it has increased more is domain knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, companies want specialists in certain domain. For mm -hmm. example, fintech companies, which are going leaps and bounds in India, especially if you look at the Indian market, if you look at the Indian startup scene, there are numerous fintech players. They want spe specialist fintech people for doing the job. Similarly, yeah. if you go into agriculture industry or say oil and gas industry or say pharmaceutical industry or any industry, if you have that knowledge, healthcare, another big one, okay, yeah. uh, life sciences, I mean, you name it, there are so many industries that industry yeah. knowledge is very important. Correct. Okay, you have to understand supply chain. Now, why am I saying all this? How will you apply testing in that context is very important. So, of course, your fundamentals will play a, a role, but how much do you know about the business? How can you help your company grow? Hmm. If the company grows, your role will grow. Hmm. You will have more opportunities. So you have to start thinking from that perspective. Correct. So, so answering that question, I would say you have to go deep and you have to go wide as well. So, you know, diagonally, if you go, then I think it will help you a lot. Uh, that that's one bit. Now here is another thing, and and I wanted your thought on this one, uh, Naveen. So Sandeep is, uh, so sorry, Sundar is asking if I have to lay a path of testing to product management role. Hmm. What is the core ability or core knowledge one should have? See, product knowledge is great, no doubt. But you think about product knowledge means the domain expertise in that particular uh, product and in which area the business is working and you should be able to solve some customer real-time problems this is how product management rules no doubt the communication everything should be there but you should know that how to get the right things the right context of the requirement from the stakeholders from the client and the customers and delivering it to the your engineering team <clears throat> qa and dev team over there <clears throat> and then Make sure that these people are developing the right things at the right time and giving back to the production, to the customer, according to the customer requirement and all those things. So that is very important. So core ability and core knowledge about the domain, your business. As Bridges mentioned, let's see, 
if you are in let's see healthcare or fintech and uh, the domain expertise are very much required so that is an extra edge and advantage a qa guy will definitely will be getting it because you know the system in and out because it's not about only for a specific page you are doing a testing or only specific feature you are testing it you are testing the whole system and because of that you are adding so many good use cases and the test cases and the scenarios so because of that the tester is having a better knowledge as compared to the developer because developer focuses only on writing the code and then uh, you know implementing the specific logic there but your job is just to check everything is working properly everything impact analysis risk analysis and everything and then you know the things better so this career switch if you really want to do it definitely is going to help you a lot because you're coming from the qa testing background and then you just need to make sure that okay uh, talk to people and then talk to the different stakeholders getting the right uh, right set of requirement and then making sure that you it's your product product owner or product manager means it's your product now it's your responsibility now to deliver the product for that you have to go through from the client to the engineering team and then every developer you have to sit and then making sure that they are developing the right things they are not bothered about which technology that you are using it but making sure that you are developing the right thing according to the customer requirement and the client requirement no navin uh, that brings me to a question that i had in my head and i wanted to know your thoughts about it so a lot of times uh, you know uh, there are these situations when the product owner comes to you and he says oh you know what we are making this change in this particular feature and you are already halfway into your your mm. testing and then you have to go back and scrap your test cases right new set of test cases hmm so is there a foolproof way of of getting around this kind of situations hmm. because these are happening too frequently hmm in what we call as an agile world or something like that so as a tester how do i safeguard myself and be ready for such situations yeah See, that's why like and and, and i'm asking this because uh, you you played the role of an engineering manager uh, from the testing side uh, mm. so 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 give me a perspective from a tester's uh, view mm. and from mm. a manager's view as well yeah so you have to be very balanced we cannot say that uh, as a tester i cannot say that okay no i have tested now you are giving me the requirement because you have to think about the manager you know point of view also but definitely you can raise a voice there in the yes. in the retro and everything that why it is happening so frequently so to make sure that okay it should not happen next time in the retro perspective you can just write all the problems what went wrong in the last sprint in the last couple of sprints how can we improve that maybe the uh, acceptance criteria was not defined properly maybe why it got missed it's a problem with the dev team or the a product management side that okay maybe <clears throat> who could not deliver the product uh, requirement correctly or maybe from the client side also client is like uh, <clears throat> so volatile sometimes that okay every time they are changing they are not happy with the requirement every time or changing it they are also not much clear about it then why we started the development unnecessary it is actually taking a lot of efforts and everything so you can raise these concerns instead of saying that okay no you should have the enough time definitely we should have the enough time and then but you can just always as a qa improve the quality as a qa that try to give a suggestion that okay yeah this is what we can do you can just uh, the story points that you are defining it and for a such a large feature you are not getting enough time to do that because your story points are not <clears throat> marked properly so you are not considering the qa uh, efforts and dev efforts plus maybe some last moment changes it could happen then in that case you should have the proper user story points and everything you have to provide that but you should always raise a concern and the voice it should not be like that okay now every sprint you are facing the same problem that could be like forever like it will be a problem in that case i think that is an excellent answer uh, navin um so here is another interesting question um and this is a common problem with hmm. a lot of companies So Yashwant is asking, what is your take on putting only QA uh, teams held accountable for any bug on production, especially mm-hmm. when the product has so many factors which can affect the production environment? Correct. Great so, uh, question, Yashwant. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a team's responsibility. 
so if production bug is coming it's not because of uh, you missed something and i think a lot of companies they started implementing this and they adopting this particular concept that okay it's a team responsibility quality is a team responsibility it's not about only the qa team will be blamed all the time if it is getting blamed then you have to justify that okay why we are getting blamed why we should uh, I, I mean maybe it could be a problem from the dev side maybe this feature itself is not implemented then how can you expect from only from the qa team definitely it's my mistake also that we missed it maybe we could not see the requirement properly or maybe there are no test cases around it or maybe we could not uh, too much be too much dependent on the automation we missed that and maybe there is a leakage so you do a proper uh, rca the root cause analysis where exactly the problem happened and then present you know in a proper documentation proper uh, uh, in which area in at which stack it got problem maybe the back end side where exactly uh, how can we uh, mitigate these kind of issues in the future and everything but you should be very vocal about it that it's not about only the qa thing if it is missing something from the dev and the management side also then definitely everyone should be involved in that case so i think uh, that's a very bad thing if someone is pointing only to the qa team because from the qa side uh, everything was working fine in the qa environment but maybe some configuration issue maybe something happened on the production maybe something environment some environment issue suddenly came into the picture so that is also we have to think and uh, you know taking a consideration about that as well <clears throat> well i i i have a little more to add to that situation mm -hmm. um, so normally when a bug comes in production the tendency is first to say mm -hmm. oh you testing team has missed it or mm -hmm. this tester has missed it or something like that. that is a normal tendency however from a testing perspective it is very important for you to understand if everyone in the team including mm -hmm. the developers architects product owners scrum mm -hmm. master whoever is involved everyone had the same understanding of that feature that is being developed mm -hmm. and more often than not it is the lack of this common understanding mm -hmm. these issues crop up Okay. and and i'm saying this based on you know d25 years of experience that i have in the industry i have been in these situations i have had these discussions so when such situations happen you as a tester can initiate the rca and the mm. first question should be to establish if there was a common understanding of mm. the feature that has been released which has had that bug Hmm. and you will find out that there was a miss somewhere in the understanding first of all secondly right. secondly could that issue have been prevented if enough unit testing was done correct if the developers had tested it hmm. that could be another question did the product owner explain this the feature to you and the developers in the same manner or hmm. did they receive sometimes in a lot of organizations what happens is product owners go with requirements to developers and what mm. testers get is a mm. developers version of the requirement mm. they don't even have access to product owner which is Correct. which is a bad scene bad scene okay. yeah. uh, testing is often treated as a silo mm. activity okay mm. so uh, you know i say this uh, a lot and i've written a blog also on this people mm. say quality is everybody's responsibility mm. First of all, you don't know how is quality everybody's responsibility. So that clearly clarifying that how mm. is very important. And secondly, I made an addition to that. Okay, mm. people talk about quality assurance, quality assurance testing, and quality assurance, quality assurance is different from testing. Blah blah whatever. Okay, I don't think they are different. Okay, mm. what I think is quality is not everybody's responsibility. Quality assurance is everybody's responsibility. to Make assure exactly. quality in the product is everybody's mm. responsibility mm. your job is to test to find out the current state of affairs in the product tell what is going on discover the unknowns find out mm. the problems report them that is your job okay now once you find the bugs debug them try to get to the root cause bottom of the bug as to why this has occurred and mm. see if you can provide any possible solutions or work around okay help the developers with their unit testing help the uat folks with their user acceptance testing you can do yeah. all of that mm. similarly the developers who are developing can do unit testing integration testing properly and Correct. make sure that you know no untested code is going going coming to you guys 
Okay. Similarly, the product owners and the architects can make sure that that enough or proper information is given to the team. So everybody has to collaborate and work. It cannot happen that you know teams are working in different planet. Okay, one different. Uh, in 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 a you know most of the people they say oh we are working in Scrum, hmm. and their interpretations of Scrum are so different from each other. So it is it is a mess. So everybody has to have their common understandings throughout the project. So this is one very important uh, thing to notice. Now um, there was another question uh, I, I had seen, and I'm looking for that question once again. It got lost somewhere. It spoke about uh, observability. So Naveen, um, what is your take on observability? Because I have I have started seeing that a lot of testers are also voicing for. more of observability and observability related tools coming and uh, can those uh, yeah some this is right. just, hmm. yeah so some companies these days expect you to engage hmm. heavily on observability navin can you please create a playlist on observability like grafana and prometheus hmm. but before that i want to understand from you are you also noticing this trend of a focus on observability and somehow observability sidelining what testing does or do you yeah. think it's or or do you think testing is a is an activity which is ingrained in observability no the tester should be there because uh, you won't believe in my last company i learned a lot i was working with sixth and the entire german qa team i learned from them that uh, they were actually completely focusing on the grafana and which api is giving me the panic immediately mm-hmm. we were getting a notification in the slack through uh, kibana and grafana graphs we were checking it and then checking that uh, which api is giving me 404 or 500 or maybe some uh, a timeout issue or response time issue or something like this and then we were actually doing a lot of uh, observation and then we would keep taking care of those things and the moment we get the panic any kind of exception panic means any kind of uh, i would say exception or any if api is something getting down or any microservice is getting down immediately we were fetching the log and then putting as a bug and then taking care of and then uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, follow ups on that why is it happening like this because it's coming on the production so this is something very important as a tester you should know about that how exactly the customer is using the application because once is being used by let's see for example in the e-commerce application during the thanksgiving day thousand of people are using this application so definitely that you have to keep monitoring so monitoring is very important and then set up these tools and these tools are actually these days uh, already set up very well set up by the infrastructure team and the integration team and the devops team you just need to focus on that which right query that i have to put and which uh, right observability pattern that i have to use for my application on a stage environment on the production environment and and okay for the uh, services point of view and everything that's very very important and you have to take a immediate take an immediate action on it that what could be the reason behind that why is it happening like this why we are getting this we have to raise a bug in the zira we have to uh, raise a concern about it and then make sure that these panics are you know uh, getting resolved and then fixed immediately after that <clears throat> so yeah it plays a very important role for the qa side as well well while while i agree to this i also want to emphasize on the fact of learning such tools for for testers it becomes very critical mm-hmm. uh, you know if, if you guys are working on devops and if you know these tools in mm-hmm. the devops environment it is extremely helpful so while you focus your energy on tools such as selenium and others to enhance your testing capabilities focus on monitoring tools such as datadog observability tools such as grafana prometheus okay it's only going to help you you are going to learn better you are going to learn uh-huh. more okay in fact and, uh, when we i was in uh, i was in walmart so there is no difference between qa and dev in these companies uh, yeah it was like um, you know for 15 next maybe for next 15 days you will be the night watchman you can mm-hmm. get the panic any time you have to be responsible for that so mm-hmm. pager duty we were using it you must have heard about guys there are yeah, tools yeah. on rail link and all these kind of tools so i used yeah. to get a immediate call from the production support that there is a panic and the service is down 
So mm-hmm. in the two o'clock in the night, also because I was responsible for that as a QA, I used to log in and seeing what is the issue. Maybe a quick mm-hmm. restart of the service, or maybe clearing the cache, clearing the temporary files from the logs, and then checking. And then if still I'm not able to do it, then the second guy, the second L2 support will get the will get the call as a developer. Or L2 is also not able to solve it. Then L3 guy, the actual DevOps or the ops team will get it, and they will try to resolve it. So you, it's not about QA and dev only dev responsibility. My job is just to finish my testing and then done. No, you have to learn these tools, infrastructure, DevOps and everything, and then uh, play a very fruitful role in your current project. Yeah, so uh, I have a similar experience working with, with HP mm-hmm. and I was testing uh, storage devices for their storage division. I was responsible mm-hmm. for performance testing. So, you know, day in, day out tests used to run and I used to monitor them all the time. Mm-hmm. And when there was a panic button that was pressed from the production side that, okay, you know, uh, these machines are getting time out or, or something mm-hmm. like that, then, you know, I have to somehow get into the lab and, and, and make sure that I fix things from there, because for that, it was required that you log in and, uh, you know, you put the machine in such a state where you can remove one disk out see what is the error in that particular disk and then replace it if required. Okay, so such such systems were there where we had to work and that is why it was very important for us to know mm. the working of that system inside out and yeah. the entire process. So, mm. you know, absolutely aptly put, there's no difference between a developer and a tester. Mm. Okay, whatever the developer knows, you also know. In fact, you know a lot more than what the developer knows in a lot of situations because they are focusing on on a particular set of features where you are focusing on the entire application. Um, there is a question specifically for you, Naveen. What is the ideal time for testing a product or a feature based on the developer takes time to develop the product? Again, your engineering management experience. What is the ideal time for testing a product or feature based on the developer takes time to develop the product? See, from the beginning itself, you have to be involved proactively. Like your job is just like you are a crazy guy in the team as a tester. That why is it happening? Why uh, why you are not doing like this? Ask the questions during the requirement phase also while we are discussing sprint planning and everything. Why is it happening like this? What exactly? Uh, can I talk to the developer? Can I talk to the product manager? Can I talk to the stakeholder directly so that I can get the you know better understanding? Can I go to the client side also? Can I travel to the client side just to get yeah. the knowledge about and feel the feel of the business? So yeah. you have to be super proactive as a crazy guy in your team so that uh, it will help you a lot. The initial preparation will help you a lot in the real-time testing that you're going to do once the product is actually developed. So that experience will help you a lot. That that knowledge transfer that is coming from the product manager or the stakeholders will help you a lot. So that is making you uh, different from others, definitely. It is going to help you a lot as well. So I think uh, from the beginning itself, you have to be involved. And then obviously when the product is developed and during a development cycle also, you can contribute, you can check the unit test cases. You can do a lot of integration test cases. You can do backend API testing also if the UI is not ready. And after once the UI is ready, then you can perform the end-to-end functional testing and the system testing also, you can do it. In fact, you after the deployment also on the production, you can do some production uh, testing also there as well. So it's like uh, as a QA guy, you are always super busy in your team. I don't think so that, okay, once the product is ready, then only I will test it. No, you have to be super proactive. In all the sprint ceremonies, you have to be involved. Otherwise, in fact, I don't think so developer should be involved. But as a QA guy, you have to be involved. You have to be super proactive throughout the life cycle of the product. Now, uh, here's a question that I I wanted to ask you earlier. Now I remember this question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, when people start talking about automation, Mm -hmm. one of the things that comes into the mind immediately is ROI, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, to show the management the value of automation that mm. that we are trying to derive. Mm. Similarly, in case of AI, also mm. people have started talking about ROI. Okay, mm. so so what is your take on the ROI of AI in testing? 
I think it's too early to say AI in testing if you are getting. So what is the return of investment we are putting? Like we are getting after putting so many efforts and everything and then implementing the right set of AI, putting a lot of money on the AI based tools and everything. Are we really getting the in, uh, return out of it? So maybe let the system matured enough. Let the tools, if they are using the AI part, let the system matured enough and then we can think about it. But yes, ROI should be there in any field, yeah. either it is automation yeah. or testing or whatever. See, if I'm implementing the automation also, if you're not getting the right ROI, then what is the use of automation also? Are you uh, I mean, are you hired for the fancy work? Just launch the things and then see automation is happening. And then, but if you're not able to do the right things, if it is not helping you during the regression cycle and it is not helping you to catch some errors and the problems in the system, then in that case, what is the point of doing some, creating this big elephant in the house, right? So that is very important. If there is no ROI, then there is no point. I have seen projects, the some blunders also I have seen in my previous pro experiences also I have seen that one year of time is still no ROI through automation. It's still like they are developing the thing. It's still they are uh, making changes. And then but the moment you ask about the, can we execute it today? Can we sh make sure that, okay, the automation is running in the background and 30, 40% things are getting executed through automation so that it will be a big relief for me. So that is the ROI in terms of saving time, in terms of saving manual efforts and everything and release the product as soon as possible. Because five years back, seven years back, maybe you would have, uh, you know, you would have, you know, survived, but now management is also very smart. They know that, okay, yeah, the ROI is very important. They are not going to put money on this much. They are not going to wait for a longer period of time. You have to give the return out of it. So that's why I'm saying whatever you're learning, either it is AI or automation or any specific tool, your target should be solving a problem. Yes. Solving a problem in terms of solving the manual efforts, solving the uh, the time and everything, which is through my automation, don't target 80, 90% of automation. 20, 30% also, if you have done with the proper things, with the right thing, with the right proper of validation, checkpoints and everything, that is also more than enough sometimes. I, I, I absolutely love that answer. And I mean, here's something additional that, that I would like to add to that. I look at the investment that is done in testing or as, as in automation or now in AI in terms of testing is it is like an insurance premium that you're paying. Mm -hmm. Every month you're paying or every year you're paying an insurance premium. So it is not a, an investment investment it mm. is the money that you're paying that is going to safeguard you in the end mm. right so whether it is you are deriving 20 percent benefit out of it that is you go for a small treatment or you go for 80 percent benefit where you go for a bigger treatment that insurance premium that you're paying will pay mm. you the dividends or or the output or the return later on right you it, you will be saved from so many challenges in the market. So I completely agree with you that, you know, whatever it is, focus on that. It may not give you immediate returns, but it will give you returns over a long, longer period of time. Yes. AI is something very new in the market. Still people are experimenting, still people are challenging. For example, I hmm. have, I stand in the challenging side of, of the camp. Okay. I still feel that that GPT is not good enough. And that is why, you know, while I have seen it write code for me, I am not willing to trust it. Okay. Mm. So, so far, I don't trust that code. I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And I am optimistic about it. But at the same time, I want to invest in learning more and more. I want to invest in how the LLMs work. I want to invest in how to test these LLMs. Okay, I want to invest in 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 understanding how do I make use of the output of these LLMs to my advantage in my context, okay. and how do I make sure that I design prompts so that I can get get a context independent output which I can plug and play in every situation. Right. So, so these are the kind of learnings that I'm doing, which is an investment from my side. 
the returns Correct. will not come immediately to me they will come over a period of time so that's that's particularly what i think and and that's why you know my thoughts are in complete alignment with yours so um i mean I, i'm seeing if there are any other interesting questions there are a lot of questions but i think we've gone over a lot of those questions uh, yeah so i would request guys please don't expect that some specific very technical question if you're asking me we can connect it separately but we would definitely try to take some generic questions about the testing that yeah, no so if you have technical questions of course definitely reach out and that is why the the you know the uh, links to the telegram groups and the linkedin uh, profiles right. have been shared so feel free to connect uh, with us on those platforms whether it is uh, in the telegram group or in the uh, over linkedin where you can ask us those questions so ask your questions definitely by all means but here uh, ask some general questions which will help the wider audience uh, but rajesh uh, i have one question for you mm -hmm. so for the new generation mm -hmm. the people having recently passed out they really want to start the career with testing and uh, mm -hmm. people having two years or three years or you know one year experience guy mm -hmm. what would you suggest them that what about the testing career in future plus what should they learn in terms of testing and uh, how can they survive in the testing especially okay. in the ai driven or automation driven market okay i know with with ai and automation things can look daunting to you especially as a fresher but uh, here's what i think okay mm -hmm. how did we learn uh, english as kids how did mm -hmm. we start what mm -hmm. we did was we started with the basic alphabet we mm -hmm. started learning a b c d upper case lower case then understanding a little bit of grammar then slowly started constructing words then started constructing sentences and then mm -hmm. when we used it over and over and over again practiced over and over and over again we got better at it so in your testing journey there is enormous scope in testing okay let's let's make no mistake the scope mm -hmm. is there enormous scope jobs are there will be there they are there are some fantastic really high paying jobs if you can become specialist testers mm. performance testers security testers if you have uh, you know knowledge of these days ai ml if you can also be domain specific testers you can mm. make a lot of money okay mm. even more than developers in certain situations you mm. know uh, testers in nasa get paid more than the developers there mm. um, so you know it is it is like that so there is definitely an opportunity for you mm. in terms of career now as far as learning is concerned start with learning the basics of testing mm. okay understanding of testing as to why you need to do it you know what kind of testing are you going to do it focus on those things get the basics right simultaneously understand the fact navin said it in the very first response he gave it is mm. very important for us to learn to code to learn to program because in today's day and age if you want to survive mm -hmm. you have to embrace automation okay and when i say automation if you have seen i am very careful about the choice of my words i do not use terms like test automation or automation testing i use a term called automation in testing mm -hmm. a simple example if you do uh, you know if you write a macro which mm -hmm. does a sum or whatever in your excel that is also automation correct it could be as, something as simple as that hmm. okay it could be something really simple as that or something complicated where you know you are writing a entire test framework for your fintech hmm. product okay hmm. it could be on either end of the spectrum but for that you have to understand code and and navin very nicely highlighted the value of what value you get out of understanding uh hmm. code uh, how can you communicate how can you get better so embrace automation by all means learn about new technology keep yourself up to speed you know talk to a lot of people talk to developers talk to testers learn from each other's experiences okay attend meetups attend conferences okay uh, you know attend sessions like these 
where mm. there is a lot of knowledge being given okay watch videos there are plenty available on on youtube not just from creators like navin but you know other creators as well who who are touching upon a lot of diverse topics okay uh, so look at those learn from there if you have questions reach out to people ask those questions and most importantly get your hands dirty test okay do testing all the time build your portfolio okay if you have done any side project if you have done a testing project which has not been a paid engagement or whatever whether you did it in, in your college or in your hob uh, as a hobby list it okay make a list of what you have learned from that project build a portfolio share that portfolio along with your cv and see how powerful it's going to get exactly okay share it build a you know now github is such a beautiful tool okay and yesterday i i shared uh, you know uh, abhijit vikers uh, github link and you know what he has listed in that how different companies test their products hmm. isn't that a beautiful collection if you want to know how netflix is doing testing then you can go and see so what is their test strategy what kind of tools they use what is their thought process what automation are they using okay what were their failures everything is there how google is testing its software how facebook is doing testing how so that will give you a lot of ideas you will learn a lot you understand from different perspectives that okay different people are thinking differently about testing read books read blogs write your blogs okay Correct. make make your videos uh, you know nowadays there is so much opportunity share your knowledge teach people to learn more so Correct. if you are a fresher uh, if you are new to the industry don't get daunted by seeing oh my god ai oh my god automation it's not an oh my god make it your friend navin said it again in the very first response he gave automation and ai are your friends make them your friends embrace them and uh, you know that's that's my advice to not just freshers navin to all testers mm. you know so yeah that's that's the answer to your question it was a Great. little long but hmm. but it was very much needed uh, prajesh from your side because uh, it's uh, because uh, these days the freshers who are coming in the new generation they are coming they actually should know the value of uh, testing and then the right way of learning testing what to learn what not to learn and absolutely agree with you you actually presented very beautifully that what to learn and the why basics and the portfolio is so important these days yes. blog it write some medium blog or maintain your git repositories or share those things with others that will highlight your profile a lot that's very important plus i'll tell you this navin i'll tell you this navin a lot of times we are hesitant hmm. to include the side projects or the or the free projects that we have done or our college projects in our resume correct my question is why if you have done something which has given you value which has given you knowledge put it there correct okay if you think it is taking too much space on your uh, or resume uh, you know put it in your github repository give the link in your resume okay and that link will stand out and people will go and check it out so there is you are giving people more and more opportunities to go check out stuff that you have done showcase what you are doing guys i mean exactly. as testers there are so many opportunities it's unbelievable it's unbelievable i like the way you know mulya does their interview hmm. uh, what they do is they they actually ask you to test and right. when you go for the interview go with the test results go with hmm. the test reports as to how you have tested what have you done if you are applying for a github uh, sorry uh, an automation role go with your portfolio show them what you have done so far correct so yeah fact, we did one practice with etc last year you know rem you remember that we gave a yeah, task exactly with james and uh, yeah. how beautifully people presented their ideas writing a test yeah. cases and putting a lot of efforts in presenting the ideas i think those kind of practices will give you a lot of confidence and uh, in fact in fact at a time of interview also please don't ask those typical you know theoretical mm -hmm. questions 
it's a humble request to everyone who are taking interviews these days guys please you cannot judge anyone if someone is giving giving the definition between regression or retesting those no, days no. Are- smoke smoke versus sanity i mean my favorite exactly. <laughs> so those days are gone please challenge them ask some some uh, great uh, fundamental based questions plus give some application and then try to tell them okay write some best use cases and test cases and test this application find out some some uh, problems with this application so this is the way you can uh, test a tester's ability that's again again another debatable topic maybe we can take it later but a small portion i really want to add it here that from the first round itself you are asking that okay can you solve this uh, graph problem or can you reverse this particular linked list i think it's not needed for a tester personally i believe that first round should always be that this guy is having a really testing mindset or having the right set of skills for a tester or not give them application and let's see if you are giving one application to a 10 year or 12 year 12 years experienced guy so i really want to see that level of maturity the way that person is writing the test cases and testing that application finding some amazing problems and observing the problems and the errors in the specific application that will definitely i'll hire that guy instead of solving a very complex problem but very poor in thinking ability for as a tester and there is no use of that because end of the day you have to test my application i'm not here okay. i'm not hiring one a coding expert or uh, you know lead code expert here i'm hiring a tester here having a right set of mind yeah it's very important that the way the interviews are conducted change first of all when uh, i i see a lot of people also doing mock interviews and i was quite impressed by the mock interviews you used to do i think we should and we still have one pending navin yeah. if you recall we have to do one uh, mock right. interview now something that i have observed as a pattern in in the interviews that are done is they go on an interrogation mode hmm. okay it's like i am asking question you are giving answer i am asking question you are giving answer and then it comes to a point where the interviewer is kind of challenging hmm. the person the candidate uh, to prove the point and if at any point the candidate gives a better answer than what the interviewer knows then hmm. it's a tata bye bye for for that correct which is a very difficult situation now instead if you change the mode of your interview and make it more discussion oriented and make it more friendly and make it more situation based hmm. you know and ask them questions as to how they solve particular problems correct you could give your situation but mask it in a way as such you know ask if the the candidate has solved such a problem and how hmm. he or she did it or what was the way in which hmm. you know uh, for example if even if i have to ask questions related to automation hmm. okay mm. so you know framework related questions people have a general pattern of answering those questions correct correct you could make those questions a lot more interesting mm. okay you could obviously ask them about the framework but make them context specific mm. right in their context how did they go about building that framework mm. who to with whom did they collaborate okay how did they get the information that they needed what were the challenges that they faced while building that that framework what tools what technology dig in slowly don't jump straight away and and ask one random question to which you know a lot of generic answers are there a lot of youtubers what they do is they give generic answers and a lot of candidates mug up those answers exactly. they go and blabber the same same thing that is the biggest problem i really hate yes. those mock interviews where frankly speaking this is like really bad we are just mm. mug up those questions and memorize those few lines and then same line you are speaking at a time of interview also so what is happening because of this thing right the good candidates are losing the job or not getting the job a good candidate i will tell you something I, mean, i will tell you something from my own experience okay uh, so once i was looking for an automation uh, engineer uh, and i was interviewing and this candidate comes up and the answer that he gave me on a question related to framework was exactly the answer that i had re- that i had heard from a youtuber uh a few weeks ago or something like that 
and that surprised me and then i put that candidate on the spot did you learn from this particular channel hmm yeah so uh, and he confessed saying yes and i said so where is your originality and what came out after that was that he has never worked on hmm. this but he wants to get that job so hmm. desperately so eagerly so it's hmm. the same point that you were mentioning that you know learning to crack the interview that attitude was reflected so exactly because this is very important if you are in the first round itself you are bombarding with those typical questions because uh, and if, and what kind of impression also that you are giving from your side as an interviewer also asking those typical question to a 15 years experienced guy because i want to utilize i want to see your knowledge your experience correct with 10 years and 15 years experienced guy i'm expecting some level of understanding the responsibility plus maturity in terms of good understanding about the testing and everything i want to utilize that area not a typical basic questions or uh, give me the typical definition based questions i really want to see develop those questions and so that i can ask you directly situation based question in this situation how will you solve it if you are having uh, a responsibility of doing this uh, testing for this particular project how exactly kind of test cases or how will you convince the management and the project team and everything and then these situation based question i really want to ask instead of bombarding with unnecessary uh, bookish or coding based questions in the first round itself because of this what is happening some amazing guys or deserving candidate actually losing the job and not getting the offer right because i don't want to hire a robot who is actually yeah, just yeah, only yeah. writing the code and solving lead code problem i want to hire because in testing how can you just rely only on the lead code this is the problem with the these product companies amazon and walmart and these big google and everything you go there first two rounds always on those complex problems you have to solve three questions in 45 minutes let's see on lead code how will you solve it that is not my expertise right i'm a 15 year experienced guy specialized into testing and specialized into this particular domain give me the questions what exactly you want to take it from my side so guys that don't fancy and uh, fantasize about uh, from these big companies there are some really good companies also there in the market who actually focus on the real time experience for testing not for typical uh, just memorize a code and then solving the lead code problems absolutely <clears throat> absolutely completely agree i think i think that is some solid advice to people who are taking interviews please please for for <laughs> heaven sake for everybody's sake review your interview processes okay make them more friendly make them more conversational don't make them robotic q and a don't make them look like interrogation uh, it is not about anybody's ego you are not sitting there to please somebody's ego or not the candidate is coming to please your ego it's it's for your company you are looking for a good candidate you're going to work together in future and and make the most of it so uh, and and interviews are not a place to show your knowledge as an interviewer mm -hmm. you know sometimes the interviewer is like he's trying to show off uh, how much he knows and <laughs> if i happen to know more than the interviewer then it's again data by my for me so yeah, that, that is that is there like ego problem with the interviewer is always there that you have to face it this is part of interview process actually so don't mind no, also the... <laughs> in fact i i get uh, navin that i did not get the feedback this company is bullshit okay. no you cannot say okay. just because the one person is not giving you the interview feedback so it's fine this part of the process just move on and don't expect that yeah. okay, somebody will write the proper feedback to you or hr will send the feedback okay these are the improvement points that you have to do it no they are they don't have time for that please try to no, accept so, so see yeah. that's 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 a totally different debate we have with hr okay yeah. why they are not not giving feedback and they also have a question why candidates are not coming for interviews even yeah. after promising that they will come so it is from both sides this 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 is this is a chicken and an egg problem okay so we are trying to i'm talking about some i have seen my students they come and navin we gave the interview interview went very well uh, i know interview went very well according to you but maybe yeah. someone is better maybe yeah. they they got someone better or maybe uh, less package or there are so many factors there could be so many factors and yes. we cannot yes. expect because sometimes we we become so emotionally uh depressed not okay no they rejected me but my five rounds were fantastic 
it can may happen any time so that's okay try to accept it and just move on otherwise what will happen you are unnecessarily depressed and then into that trauma for for a couple of weeks that why i could not get the offer from that company and don't expect fine we should expect from the hr also that okay just please let me know as soon as possible am i hired or not but micro level a feedback from the interviewer what was the wrong with that question and the answer and everything i think we should not expect that well uh, i have a, a diff- not not a different take but i have an additional take on this in terms mm. of rejection you know I, i have lost count of how many times i have been rejected in interviews in my career okay uh, but every time i have learned one thing and that is every time there is a rejection it tells me something that there is something that i need to work on ah. to get better so that i find a better opportunity because there is something better which is in store for me so instead of getting emotional and uh, crying yeah of course of course there is a bad feeling if you miss a good opportunity of course that will be there but instead of holding on to it and crying and saying you know what they rejected me blah blah and then not looking at it look at look at it as an opportunity mm-hmm. what could you have done differently in the Correct. interview to secure that position think about it so it's it's like somebody is giving you a new path mm-hmm. so when that rejection happens it's like a new path for you to take in order to achieve what you are trying to do so look at it from that perspective and it's very important as you guys give interviews and again for those who are taking interviews yeah a, a feedback is good so so try and give feedback <laughs> it helps but if you have time if you have the patience of course go ahead and do it if you mm-hmm. don't i mean it reflects bad on you but then things things are there of course you know great i think uh, we should end this now it's already 130 british i think it's late for you uh, yeah, yeah 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 it's so, uh, yeah. no uh, it's not late for me it's 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 early for me it's time for my family to be woken up i know you must have uh, no, so my family is already woken up uh, so when we started the discussion <laughs> it was 6:30 in the morning so now yeah. it's 9 am so yeah thank you so navin for for such a wonderful discussion and one thing i i of course loved and i've always wanted to say this to you but i'll say this in front of the entire crowd that i love that picture behind you of the mercedes <laughs> benz moment you have with mukesh in that little frame in that picture i think that was one of the most beautiful moments uh, i have experienced in my testing journey i felt so happy that day looking at this picture on linkedin mm-hmm. it was like wow this is how you celebrate somebody else's uh, <laughs> so mukesh mukesh of course i call him the mercedes benz of software testing for he what is. he does he's 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 always happy for others uh, and, and he's always smiling so so yeah. so that is a beautiful picture navin i i yeah. i saw this in your videos and i was always like okay when i speak to you I'll, i will talk about it so mukesh is also having the similar kind of picture <laughs> given by me actually so. <laughs> yeah that's 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 very nice yeah so so guys this is another learning okay in testing i mean if you are happy for each other if you push each other you climb greater uh, heights and mukesh and navin both have set such a brilliant example for all of us um I, i'm extremely thankful to you navin for for giving me this opportunity of coming to your channel sharing our knowledge and uh, i of course look forward to a lot many more uh, conversations with you with all of you and uh, you know we will uh, hope to see you guys shining in the sky you know and doing some wonderful things as testers in other roles or whatever you do thank you so much great rajesh that it was very much needed i was literally feeling from last couple of months that i think uh, we should have uh, this discussion because in 2021 22 we had a lot of discussion but i think it's very much needed now so i'm uh, guys we will make sure that okay either on ttc or on my channel or on other social media on linkedin we will keep uh, creating the content and the discussing some amazing things and we will try to take all your questions in the next upcoming uh, webinars in the podcast also yes 
of course definitely thank you so much thank you so much everyone for joining it was a pleasure having you thank uh, you guys uh, yeah so just share this video on all, you know in your uh, with your friends with your colleagues who are in testing and on social media they will definitely i'm sure that uh, there will be a great learning for those and guys if you haven't subscribed yet do so yeah come on <laughs> and go to DTV channel as well, and then please go and uh, there are a lot of good, amazing podcasts and uh, good videos are there on TTC as well. Go and then subscribe the channel. That will. And one last better. thing, one last thing. Guess what? You could also be in the in the podcast uh, somewhere in the future. Uh, so it's just that you know you showcase your work, share share the knowledge, and you get an opportunity of appearing on the Great. podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, and then uh, keep watching Navin Automation Labs. Thank you. Bye-bye.